Uh, hi everyone, so um, yeah, I'm uh, One Eye Deacon. I'm gonna be running uh, Plants vs. Zombies Any Percent. I'll let my co-commentator introduce himself as well. Hi, uh, my name is Easy Pig, and I am a uh, top runner of PVZ, and Deacon has invited me to be his co-commentator, and I'm very excited to uh, commentate for you. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. So uh, first we'll uh, create our uh, uh, new uh, save. And so um, what this category entails is uh, completing the first uh, 50 adventure mode levels. Uh, Plants vs. Zombies is a wonderful game. Uh, if you haven't played it yet, you can uh, buy it for $5 on Steam or uh, get it for free on your phone. So if you haven't played it yet, uh, I highly recommend that. Um, so I'm going to click Start Adventure. The timer does not start yet. I will uh, let you know when it starts. Um, the backstory for this game, uh, the plot is really important. Uh, you are the owner of a house. And um, there are these zombies here that are trying to eat your brains. So um, yeah, that's the story. Uh, you're gonna be, we're gonna be planting a lot of plants to stop the zombies from getting to our house. Uh, each plant, uh, they cost a certain amount of sun uh, to plant. We start out with 150 sun every level. Uh, the first plant we have is the pea shooter. Uh, the pea shooter does what it says. It fires a pea a projectile at the zombie. And the timing is gonna start when I plant the first pea shooter. So. When I say go, three, two, one, go. And you notice we uh, planted the first pea shooter very close to the front. Uh, the reason why is that it takes less time for the projectiles uh, to hit the zombie, so it ends up being quite a bit faster, about a quarter of a second faster per tile. Um, the zombies show up in waves, so this particular level has four waves, uh, three waves with one zombie each, uh, and one wave with two zombies. Um, and yeah, otherwise this is an introductory level. We have sun that drops out of the sky. Uh, when we collect the sun, we're able to plant more plants, uh, including like these pea shooters. Um, and this is the last wave. Yeah, not every level is going to be like this. They're not all super short. One lane. The, this is purely a tutorial level. Um, everything gets much more complicated. Yeah, we uh, unlocked the sunflower. Fast, sunflower, yeah, my sister gave me this. <laughs> um, so what the sunflower does is it lets us, uh, it produces sun beyond what just falls from the sky, um, which is going to let us uh, in the long run be able to plant more uh, expensive plants in the future. Um, and so this level is a very good opportunity to do, explain something called the 50% rule. So a lot of times when I when, when new people come and see me run this game, they, they're like, hey, isn't this game like an auto-scroller? Like, how does how can you save time in this? Um, and the reason why you can save time on this is because of something called the 50% rule, which is basically that if we deal 50% of the damage to the current wave, or roughly 50%, uh, we'll be able to actually advance the next wave. So the 50% rule will be guaranteed to trigger at the uh, seventh shot P shot here. So this is six, and then this is seven. And then we're going to get um, another zombie appearing right here. So again, one, two, one, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we will get the next zombie how to show up. Uh-oh. <laughs> also, um, you might notice that uh, the zombie's arms are falling off. That always happens for the normal zombies uh, when they've taken five hits. So that can help you not have to keep mental track uh you can just see oh their arm fell off i know how many hits there are right now um that way it's a lot easier to think about it I'm a little scared of this guy eating. um yeah and so then um the one exception to the 50 percent rule is the second to last wave before the big wave so here you have to kill every single zombie uh, before we can actually have the huge wave show up. And then you also obviously have to kill all of the zombies in uh, the huge wave at the end. Yeah, what's actually interesting is um, the fact that you only have to kill all the zombies in the next to last wave that spawn uh, for the big wave to spawn will be used a lot in the future. Um, so you might actually see some zombies still on the screen uh, whenever the final wave is proc. And that's because we've killed all the zombies from the ninth wave, but there's still zombies from the eighth wave, but the game does not count those two as the same. So as long as we've done dealt with all the zombies from the ninth wave, the huge wave will spawn. Yep. Um, so 
Another aspect to the 50% rule is that the next wave will eventually trigger if you wait long enough between 25 to 31 seconds. Um, so this game also has these things called lawn mowers. So if a zombie were to reach our door, it would actually get killed uh, by hitting this lawn mower. The lawn mower kills all the zombies in a single row. Um, it's casually, it's used as kind of a backstop uh, to prevent you from immediately dying when a zombie hits there. But what we're going to actually do is try to use the lawn mowers offensively, uh, because um, for one thing, the uh, the zombie, the, the, when, when the lawnmower gets straight, it kills all the zombies in a single row. Um, and secondly, no zombies will spawn in that row for, uh, for uh, two waves after that. So um, doing that is um, going to potentially let us get a 50% rule uh, later down the line. Uh, so what yeah, I'm and this might be lining up really nicely for you it's going to look like here so we might be able to show this off really well yeah if, if we get lucky um yeah so uh, the first have... couple levels are notorious for their bad luck <laughs> yeah but we got this is what we wanted to see uh which is that we want to have this cone head get killed by the lawnmower which is a much faster way of killing that cone head uh than using pea shooters uh, this game also introduces something called the Cherry Bomb, which is a plant note called, that we call an instant, so it'll instantly kill all zombies in a 3x3 three three area. Oh, good spawn. Um, wow, these are actually some very good spawns for 1-3. Yeah, the only problem is it might be so fast that um, I might not have the cherry back in time. Yeah, that, that's always the problem with this level is that if you go too fast, your cherry bomb isn't back up in time for the final wave. But if you go too slow, then you're going too slow. <laughs> yeah. So, and then on the final wave, because uh, it's a 3x3 three three area, we'll just uh, use the cherry bomb to kill everybody. Yeah, that's 1-3. Uh, that's, uh, one uh, one four. Uh, and you will see a similar theme of us trying to get zombies into a 3x3 three three radius at the end in order for us to be able to kill all the zombies that we have with Cherry Bomb. Yep. Oh. Yeah, so um, this level is 1-4, so this level introduces the Walnut. Uh, the Walnut, casually, you're supposed to use it to block zombies from eating your plants. Uh, but what we're going to actually use it for is to actually stall zombies at a lawnmower so that we can potentially use the lawnmower uh, later to get a 50% rule, kind of like what you saw uh, in 1-3. Um, so, like, again, then what we're going to do is use this opportunity. We're going to let this wave be slow, plant a lot of sunflowers, uh, so that we can then afford uh, more expensive uh, pea shooters later on. Um, and then uh, I guess the other thing about this is, like what Easy Fix said, what we're going to try to do is trigger these lawn mowers in the uh, in the uh, eighth or ninth wave. And if we can do that, um, we're going to be able to um, have the final wave only be in the middle three rows, which is uh, what you want to have happen. It usually doesn't happen in this level. Uh, hopefully in uh, future levels, we'll see that a bit more. But um, this is yeah. one of the most RNG heavy levels um, in, the, in the run. Yeah, um, and something interesting about the walnut cooldown that I'd like to note is that um, if you place it in a normal zombie where to immediately start eating it, the cooldown comes up about three seconds, three or five seconds before um, the walnut were to actually be eaten. Um, so that can give you a good mental indicator of when to actually uh, be looking to replace that walnut or just let it go. So this, we'll see if this uh, RNG is good. No, <laughs> it is not. Unfortunate. Oh, I hold on to uh, it for another day. I should have. Uh, I'm gonna re walnut this. I'm gonna try uh, this thing. <laughs> try to get this. Uh, oh, he slowed down. <laughs> I try to get this. Co get a 50% rule on this cone head, and then I'm just spawning the next. Then have this cone head eat this pea shooter. Um, Ooh. And then use this last, last lawnmower uh, for the final wave. Okay, good, he sped up. Yeah, so um, when zombies eat plants, 
their speed is uh, re-rolled between um, either uh, the slowest value and the fastest value. Uh, it looks like this one actually re-rolled into the fastest value, uh, which is pretty nice. Um, now, hopefully, uh, we do get yeah, a good no. swan here. All right, we, yes, let's go. We got, we got one zombie, but we do have this cone head, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, this is going to actually work out pretty as a pretty good demonstration because now uh, the lawnmowers have triggered in the eighth or ninth wave, and so all the all the zombies now are going to be in the middle three rows, so we can just cherry bomb them at the end uh, and wrap up the level. Yeah, one four typically goes a lot less smooth than this. Uh, I will say that. Uh, oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Always gotta have that straggler. Yeah, sometimes the zombie is so slow and doesn't come on screen. Uh, that's okay. Yeah, um, not only is the zombie's spawning speed random, uh, their spawning location is random. But, uh, from, like, really far off the screen to right off the screen. All right. Also, um, you might have just seen him move the window. You do have to play this game either full screen or windowed, and you cannot adjust the window size. Um, so this is a, so we met Crazy Dave. He gave us a shovel, uh, which is um, very useful. We're going to be using it a lot later, unless you dig up plants. We're not using it in this level. This is a uh, walnut bowling. So this is our first uh, conveyor level. Um, so the the I guess with this conveyor level, you have either regular walnuts or you have exploding walnuts. Uh, we want to get kind of as many exploding walnuts as possible. Uh, which we usually don't. Like, I got one, which is actually better than I got in practice earlier. But, <laughs> uh, basically, the exploding walnuts have a uh, 20, or what, a 15% chance of showing up, which is uh, not good. But... Yeah, very, very small chance of showing up. However, um, as you see, they cause an instant wave pretty much regardless of where they're thrown. I'm gonna take a risk and do this. This is getting a little dicey. But... And we have this guy in case uh, I don't get any more explodos. Uh, but this is also kind of the canonical um, level where you try to uh, basically get the zombies to... Ooh, nice. Oh wait, this bottom row happened? Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, I didn't count it. But yeah, this is supposed to be the canonical, kind of the canonical level where um, you kind of constrain the zombies into a certain number of rows. I didn't quite execute it right there, but um, okay. So this is 1-6. One 1-6 six. Uh, one six introduces the potato mine. So the potato mine is another instant, uh, but it does take 15 seconds for it to arm, uh, which is kind of annoying, but what we're gonna do is plant them kind of intelligently to make sure that they arm in time uh, before the next zombie spawns so that if a zombie happens to walk into it, it'll get killed immediately. Uh, so this is going to be a very standard pattern that you see, which is where we plant three sunflowers and then a potato mine right in front of them. Now you're going to be seeing this a lot every time we uh, take potato mine and sunflower. Uh, and basically then this level also introduces something called the pole vaulter zombie. Uh, the pole vaulter zombie runs very fast, but then it'll jump over the first plant in front of it and then slow down. Um, but otherwise, this level is similar to 1 4. We're going to be trying to uh, constrain the zombies um, into the middle three rows, um, or in a certain, in three adjacent rows. Uh, and then um, the another th nice thing is that now that we have the shovel, we can actually dig up our walnuts if we ever want to use the lawnmower. I'm going to dig that up as well. Um, the reason to, for digging that up is to try to make use of this lawnmower. And, uh, just kill that a little bit faster. Uh, now there is something that... Um doesn't happen a lot here, but you can get the pole vaulter to jump over something into the potato mine. Um, it's not very likely to happen. But as you can see here, the pole vaulter can cause a lot of uh, really is, awkward yeah. scenarios. Yeah, this is uh, unfortunately very awkward. I hope that... um, especially due to its very forward leaning hitbox. Uh, as you can see, he did place that almost on top of the pole vaulter. However, it just 
wasn't affected because the pole vaulter is one of three zombies in the game to have a very far forward hitbox compared to uh, its visual indicator. At least this guy's fast. He'll, he'll get to the potato mine in a reasonable amount of time, I think. <laughs> Faster than a, than a pea shooter will kill him, so... Not, I don't think this... I forget. I think, I think this middle row is uh, the problem. Or the, not the middle row, the second row. Oh, okay. We'll just, uh, we'll just do this because I don't have very much pea shooter coverage. All right, so um, that's one six. Uh, next level is one seven, which is going to be our first two flag levels. So our previous uh, uh, levels were just one flag, which means they had ten waves. Uh, this level is going to actually have twenty waves, and because it's so long. We're not going to really try to manipulate our lawnmowers for the final wave this time. What we're going to instead do is focus on planting a lot of sunflowers. Uh, in fact, in this level, we're going to plant about 15. Um, we're then going to plant, and then we're going to basically stack pea shooters uh, to kill all the zombies. Um, and hopefully get uh, some value out of our potato mine, which uh, doesn't always happen, but uh, to get a good level, you do need it to happen. Uh, again, we're going to let this first zombie go to the lawnmower. Uh, this gives us time to get more sunflowers out, which is going to be critically important. Uh, one thing I think new players have a hard time with a lot of the time is uh, just understanding that you do need to plant a lot of sunflowers. Um, it's not necessarily intuitive. I think casually a lot of people just plant like one or two columns. Yeah, I know that casually, I only played with one my first time, and then after that, um, I moved to two in my second playthrough, and that is where I stayed. Um, in this game, we get up to four rows of sunflowers. Four columns, uh, four, yeah. So, so it's um, it's a lot. It's a lot more than casual. Yeah, nice potato mine placement. Yep. And I think with those potato mines, you can basically awesome. you can basically plant them uh, before like the third shot of the pea shooter, and it'll arm in time for the uh, next zombie. I'm gonna do this. Uh, I hope that's a good idea. That was probably not a good idea. Um, this level also introduces something called the snow pea. Um, the snow pea is basically a pea shooter, except it slows down the zombies, which is uh, not what we want because uh, slowing down the zombies um, makes them slower, which means it takes longer for projectiles to hit them. Um, yeah, in fact, uh, this is the only level that you will see us choose to take the snow pea on. And the only reason I say choose is because in a couple levels here, we will be using it again. Um, as we are forced to. This is a interesting definitely way. A, definitely a cherry bomb here. Uh, and you notice that I'm planted my sunflower flowers very creatively. Um, it's kind of a <laughs> nice abstract pattern. That's just how the level happened to go. Um, usually, you try to plant the sunflowers in the back. But... Um, I, I think it's, uh, always interesting whenever, um, you know, the, the sunflower layout happens to be like this. Um, I know that it used to bother me and now I'm just like, yeah, whatever it happens. Yeah, Especially think... because it's so satisfying to do symmetry in this game. Yeah. But, uh, in these first few levels, symmetry is, uh, not that important. Yeah, I'm getting a little overwhelmed here, so I'm tr that's why I planted this wall, this walnut here to actually do the casual strat of uh, protecting my plants. Is it gonna kill both of these guys? Good. <laughs> <laughs> And basically what we're going to use the snow pea for is basically as an alternate pea shooter when we uh, have enough sun and um, have a... and the regular pea shooter is on cooldown. Otherwise we really try to avoid using it. 
Um, yeah, and you can see how powerful that chill effect is. It's a whole 50% slower, and that's way too slow. They, It actually ends up messing up a lot of what you would want to do. Um, your choices get influenced a lot by Snoky. Um, it just adds a lot of thinking to the level because of the fact that it's like oh well this one's slower but this one isn't so he's gonna get in front of him and that might not be a good thing um due to the fact that we want to be dealing with the current wave and not the previous wave as much as possible um there's a lot that goes into pvz speed running um in fact i was telling people that i was uh, commentating this event yesterday and they were like you can speed run plants versus zombies and I went through the, exa the exact same spiel that Deacon had gone through at the beginning of this run. <laughs> and uh, with the Cherry Bomb, these final waves are always, like, kind of hard to determine where, like, where do you Cherry? Um, Sometimes it's very obvious. <laughs> that, yeah, that time was uh, pretty obvious. All right, this, this is the Chomper. Now, the Chomper casually kind of sucks. Um, this is also our first plant selection level, as we finally have enough seed packets to exceed our seed belt six. Um, but casually, the chomper is kind of uh, kind of bad, I would say, uh, since the casual strat is to you know play pretty safe, um, you know put put your pea shooters back pretty far, uh, not really speed up the level that much. Um, however, it eats a zombie. Uh, in front of it and then takes 42 and a half seconds to swallow it, which is why it's so bad um, Because it's a melee zombie. It's a melee plant. that's gonna get eaten by a zombie more than likely unless you protect it with a walnut However, we just really care about the fact that it can instantly kill a zombie So we're gonna be trying to plant as many sunflowers as possible as fast as possible here so that we can use a lot of chompers on this level uh, chompers are very good for taking out high health targets, and uh, you should be seeing that in this level. Sometimes the RNG can work out to where we only get a bunch of normal zombies. Yeah, so we get a bunch of normal zombies, which uh, can be very annoying, especially in the latter half. But um, this level introduces the bucket head. Uh, the bucket head normally takes a uh, 60 five P shots to kill, which is a lot. You cannot really reasonably kill it uh, in a reasonable amount of time. So this is the bucket head, so we're gonna save up for a chomper for it. So you can see that that's three. Uh, takes a lot more, but yeah, we'll just chomper it and now it's, now it's done. <laughs> That is, uh, that is a spawn. Okay. We kill that for one more. So normally you want to get about 10 sunflowers out. I'm, I have eight here right now, which is, uh, causing a lot of problems, honestly. Uh... Uh, it's making the level quite a bit slower. Speed it up like this. Nothing's gonna spawn at the bottom, so we should only be getting stuff. Yeah, we're gonna be getting stuff uh, in the middle. And yeah, so that's uh, that's one eight. So um, now one nine introduces us the uh, repeater. Uh, the repeater is basically it, it costs uh, twice as much as a pea shooter. Uh, it shoots two peas at the same time. It would take a pea shooter to shoot one pea. So it's basically like two pea shooters, but in one tile. So it's much more space efficient. Uh, it does cost twice as much sun, so the big problem is that you, we're going to need a lot of sun in order to, to use them. So what our, our strat now is instead of planting uh, 15 sunflowers, we're actually going to try to plant 20 sunflowers. Um, then what we're going to do is uh, get a column of repeaters out, uh, and then 
by the second flag, we're going to basically try to chomper every single uh, high hit point zombie to get our 50% rule. Um, in order to do this, to get the sun out, we're going to actually try our best to let two zombies go to the mower. Uh, that's really the only way to get uh, the early sun out, um, and sun's going to be very important. Um, so we'll let this first zombie go. Uh, usually by the sixth sunflower, the uh, second zombie will show up, so it's a second zombie's there, so that's good. It's also pretty slow, so I think I'll be able to walnut that zombie as well. So we'll stall it with a walnut and then uh, just plant more sunflowers. Um, yeah, and now as the... Uh, Chomper and the Repeater are now available. You can see that um, it makes sense why we need a lot of sun. There's a 150 cost and a 200 cost that we're going to be spamming out here. Um, the Chomper is going to pretty much be placed off cooldown in the second flag and on. Um, and Repeaters are a high upstart cost for consistent DPS. Yeah, so the repeaters are going to basically be used to clean up the waves after we uh, get our 50% rule. Yeah, and there might be a couple waves here and there where we're like, okay, this is just a, this is just a wave that we let the repeaters deal with. Um, and that's mainly for, okay, well, what do, what do we need? We need cooldowns, we need maybe to place another sunflower. Maybe I just need to place another repeater instead of a chomper for once. Um, so these decisions are going to impact every wave from that wave. So I want to say the hardest part about Zo Plants vs. Zombies speedrunning isn't... Um, also, I, I do see PVL93 in um, the chat. Yes, my mic did just uh, stop because my cat was playing with the cord. <laughs> so um, the, I, have th I have three of them. They tend to do that. It might happen a couple more times during the run. <laughs> uh, but I'd say the hardest part of Plants vs. Zombies speedrunning is knowing how your actions are going to affect later waves. Ooh. Yeah, that's going to be... Uh, Chomper actually being used again. I'm going to plant the Sunflower and get another repeater out. Just to be safe, it's not going to be that slow. Cats do be counting. And then another pattern you can do is uh, plant a... If, if your cooldowns aren't, like, great, you can um, plant a potato mine and then a chomper behind it. Uh, this will potentially give uh, get your potato your potato mine some guaranteed value later. And then you can also... You also saw I jumped a vaulter with a sunflower. My sister actually taught, told me about that, but that's also, like, a very common thing in uh, PvZ speedrunning. But, but casually, she told me, yeah, just do that if you ever want to uh, <laughs> get rid of a, a vaulter or jump it. Yeah, and um, we have been getting a good bit of bucket heads here, which is not a bad thing at all, especially with these chompers. Um, because of how the wave spawning system works, there's points to a wave. And the points can be spent on different zombies, and each zombie has a different point value to it. A uh, normal zombie has a value of 1, for instance. Uh, Conehead has a value of 2, and a bucket has, has a value of 4. Jo those are just for some basic values. So if the, if the wave had 5 points to spend, it could spawn a bucket head and a normal zombie, 2 cone heads and a normal zombie, or, you know, any, any combination of 5 total points. Um, and that's what makes the game interesting, is the fact that not every wave is going to be the same, but you know how many points are going to be in that wave, um, which increases every three waves and also increases again on the final wave, but it's it, that's a little more complicated. Um, but once you learn it, it's a very easy pattern and um, it helps you actually keep track of the waves without needing to count every single one. Um, so this is actually going to be our first conveyor belt level. And you might be like, why did Deacon just cherry bomb two normal zombies in the first wave? And also, why were there two, no three normal zombies in the first wave? I thought the first wave only got one normal zombie. 
Uh, well, this is our first uh, dash 10 level, which is like a little mini boss, I want to say. Um, it kind of recaps the whole world, gives you plants from it, uh, but on a conveyor belt. And much like 1-5, uh, we don't have to pay for things from the conveyor belt. And um, they come from a pool uh, with different chances. And we're actually going to be manipulating the conveyor belt in our favor, um, potentially here. Yeah. Now, there are a couple plants. There's potato mine, walnut, uh, pea shooter, snow pea, repeater, cherry bomb, and chomper, which is every plant that we've seen so far, uh, pretty much. Except for sunflower, because, well, why do we need sun on a level like this? We don't. Um, so how how we can manipulate these lawnmowers is yeah. uh, well not lawnmowers the conveyor belt how we how can, how we can manipulate the conveyor belt is once there are more than uh, well, once there are three or more of the same plant on the conveyor belt the chance goes down to five out of whatever the pool is so if their odds start at 20 out of 110, because that's what the values might add up to, then it goes down to 5 out of 110, or 5 out of 95, because it removes 15 from the pool in both ends. Um, so we are going to decrease the chance of getting certain plants and increase the chance of getting other plants by doing that. There's a lot of math that goes on behind the scenes of this game, and knowing it is going to help you a little bit. It's not super important that you know the exact details of what you're doing yeah and basically um and the chance goes down to one percent if you have four of the same plant so um i think it's too late to use that but yeah you really want to get cherry bombs here those are kind of the most important thing to get good 50 percent rules someone got a global gold recently yeah <laughs> like, got, like yesterday cherry bombs <laughs> which is ridiculous that was that was funny the, I, I actually was on um, I was on pace for my day to be around 29 minutes, which is really fast. I want to say the average for top runners is like 30 to 31 or like 30 minutes. And then for me, I got a 32 in my TV. Yeah, um, but I had I was on a really good pace and then 110 gave me no cherry bombs and it was really, really slow and it slowed me down by two minutes. So it can be a five minute long level. It can be a three and a half minute long level. It's just, that's just the nature of these. And um, you just gotta roll with the punches. Yeah. That's kind of the idea of the speed run. You just gotta roll with what the game gives you and be able to react well. Okay, good cherry bomb. Yeah, so we have one good cherry bomb here at the bottom. And then these potato mines should hopefully uh, help out with um, with uh, the rest of the levels. So nice we... chomper. Yeah. All right, so um, that's 110. So the zombies have given up attacking us during the day. So now they're attacking us at night. Um, so at night time, uh, the plants are all asleep, or or not our plants are asleep, but basically we don't get sun dropped out of it, dropping out of the sky. Um, so to kind of compensate for that, they give us this uh, incredible plant called the puff shroom. Uh, the Puff Shroom is basically a pea shooter. It has a limited range of, I think, two and a half tiles, uh, but it is completely free. It doesn't cost any sun. Um, so what we'll do with these is just spam them out um, pretty much whenever we can, uh, close to the front, and that kind of negates their disadvantage, uh, how you only have like a two and a half tile range. So, And, actually, and it's like better too, because um, like planting them closer to the front is faster too. So. Yeah. This is, um, right, right now, Deacon in that lane with that normal zombie essentially had a repeater for free. Uh, just to put in perspective how powerful pop shrooms are. And you can see that with the, because of the sun pace, it's actually, you have a really hard time getting, Ooh. uh, getting, um, Ooh. sunflowers out. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, not, this is kind of the worst thing that can happen in this, uh, grave layout. Um, We'll explain grave layouts a bit later. Um, and this is a newspaper zombie, so it's you can see it's reading a newspaper upside down. 
Um, and then when you destroy it, Sudoku pu it's like doing a Sudoku puzzle, I guess. Um, and when you destroy it, it gets mad and starts <laughs> running towards you. Um, yes, canonically, he was this close to finishing his Sudoku puzzle before you destroyed his his newspaper. <laughs> oh, this is all. This is like every possible newspaper. This is and yeah. and and in the three stack. So. so, why newspapers are bad is because uh, they do take up two wave points. However, they have a newspaper, and the newspaper counts as a shield. Um, now the problem with shields is that they don't fully count their health towards the 50% rule. I believe only 20% of the shield's health is counted towards a 50% rule. Um, and so what that means is that, um, the, taking time to hit the shield instead of taking time to hit two normal zombies instead, so to speak, um, would be a lot slower with the newspaper zombies, uh, just because all your- more of your hits are spent wasted um instead of all going towards the 50 percent rule that being said newspapers are great um compared to a cone head so. yes uh, yes no cone uh, god sent level, compared to a cone head so. cone heads are actually the the scariest zombie uh that like we will see more more often than not and i'm sure that every top runner will agree with you on that, that Coneheads are actually the worst zombie to deal with in the game. Yes. Um, Other than, of course, a different one later, but that's later. Okay, so um, in 2-2, two, two, uh, so the game introduces the uh, Sunshroom. Uh, the Sunshroom is basically, it costs half as much as a uh, Sunflower and produces 15 sun instead of uh, 25. So it's just, it, it's a really good way of just getting more sun production out earlier in these night levels. Um, so in night levels, it is superior to sunflower. Um, but you'll also notice we also did take sunflower. Um, the reason why is we're gonna play this level very similar to one nine, where we basically try to plant four columns of sun plants, uh, one column of repeaters, and then try to chomper every single uh, wave in the second flag. Um, and basically yeah. what, what we're, we're going to do is basically we're going to now, um, basically I think the strat is to plant a um, sunflower and then kind of help alternate the cooldowns between the uh, sunshroom and the sunflower to kind of rush out as many sun plants as possible. Yeah, in the best case scenario, you place down your sunflower and it immediately produces the 25 sun, thus allowing you to get uh, sunshroom when at, at exactly the same time. Um, however, the first time that a sun plant produces sun is actually RNG. Um, it can be like like five seconds and it can be like 20 seconds. It's it's a big range, um, but once it does produce for the first time, it is a set pattern after that, so you don't have to worry about it uh, being slow the whole time. And then um, we can also discuss the uh, graves. So the you saw at the end of one or of two one that there were ambush zombies that came out of the graves. Um, there, every time like you see one of these grave layouts, it's always a question of like where do I plant my cherry bomb? Uh, where do I where do I chomper? Oh, I didn't. That was the <laughs> that was not the knife. That's okay. This is a fast wave. Um, but yeah, basically here, so with this kind of grave pattern, like I'm considering cherrying up here at the end, at the, in the second row at the end, or in the middle. Um, it really depends. Uh, this level also has bucket heads, so that's a big reason why we, uh, took Chomper. Also, if Deacon ever misses one of the 15 sun drops from the Sunshroom, you will know immediately. Um, you will know when all the sunshrooms are grown because it is impossible to get back to a number divisible by 25 if you miss even, if you miss one. Um, you have to miss five of them in order to do that. Um, 
So uh, do do make fun of him. Uh, <laughs> if he misses it. Oh. I actually didn't know that. It's funny. Yeah. Well, it's because 15 times 5, 75, which is divisible by 25, and that's their first come math. I, I'm a math major. Ignore me. Um, All right, let's see here. Not not too bad of spawns yeah, well, so far. Only one bad bucket head. Yeah, but the, this grave layout means that there aren't really going to be any bucket terrible bucket heads. Um, yeah, which is really nice. Yeah. Um, now, in the last level, while we were talking about ambush zombies, in the last level, only normal zombies were allowed to spawn from the graves. But in this level on, both normal and conehead zombies can spawn from the graves, which means that you have to account for the possibility of coneheads, which is a lot, a lot worse than a normal zombie. Yeah, so I'm hoping that, like, the conehead spawns there, yeah. That's... Nice. Oh, this is a pretty good oh wow, this is yeah. pretty nice. Uh, this is... oh. It's gonna go... And then... Uh, yeah, probably double repeater. Now this is my favorite plant in the game. Because we I know chat was just asking about what uh, what's your favorite plant. Fume Shroom is my favorite plant. And uh, it's for a good reason. Yeah, so uh, yeah, you can you can describe this level. All uh, right, so this is two, three. We're introduced to both the Fume Shroom and the Screen Door Zombie, uh, which both have unique gimmicks that interact with each other really well. Um, so the Screen Door Zombie, which we will see pretty soon here, uh, as it is a guaranteed spawn on a very specific wave, um, it has a Screen Door in front of it that has the health of a bucket head. Um, However, the screen door can be pierced through with something that has pierced, say, a fume shroom. Um, and that pierce will allow it to damage the normal zombie behind the screen door and actually deal, like, true damage to the 50% rule as opposed to just the shield, uh, which, as we've discussed before, is very bad to be damaging a shield over a zombie. Um, now, Deacon is going to be doing a prediction on this level. That is why we took Potato Mine. Uh, there are a couple of these prediction levels whenever we know that the zombies, that the unique zombie is going to spawn on a specific wave. How uh, the spawning in this game works is that every wave, except for the first one, will decrease the weight of that row to be spawned in again. Now, unfortunately, we did not get the prediction here, so Deacon's going to have to use the screen door zombie. Unfortunately, this was an impossible prediction. Um, as we were being shown here, there's no way that Deacon could have ever placed a potato mine to kill this thing instantly. It also makes no sense, right? Like, this, this did not... Yep. Yeah, so, well, a, as we said, it just decreases the weight, so we're making as educated of a guess as possible. Yeah. Um, Sometimes the odds just don't fall in your favor, and that's just how you got to go with it. This game is a lot about knowing probabilities and being able to act around those probabilities. And so we made our best educated guess. It didn't work out, so we got to adapt our strategy immediately. We can't go up. Time to start over because, well, we're already 42 minutes in. It'd be, it'd be a little bit odd to restart now. Chomp for this, right? I'm gonna die. <laughs> Wait, yeah, not anymore. Yeah. Um, now there is still the triple stack there, uh, but that's probably gonna be cherry bomb territory. Yeah. Right. Oh. Okay, this will have to wait a little bit more. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, you can chomp for the top, and I think you're just yeah. fine. Yeah. Now, this is such a useful plant for night, and then never again, and then you'll never see it ever again, because graves are a night-unique gimmick. <laughs> 
So um, this level, we're kind of going to play it similar to 2-2, two -two, uh, where basically we took both Sunshroom and Sunflower. Again, we're going to, we don't have Repeater. Uh, instead, we have, we're going to plant kind of two Fume Shrooms or more. Uh, basically, two Fume Shrooms is like a Repeater, but with infinite pierce. So not only does it kill or damage the zombie uh, in front of it, it damages the zombies behind that uh, zombie. Um, and since there's screen doors here, it's just better. It's also cheaper to plant two fumes than one repeater, so. Yeah, also, you might have missed this, but now we have seven seed slots. And you might be wondering, how did that happen? What, what, what would even enable us to do that? Well, at the end of the level, you are guaranteed to get money from the lawnmowers from night on. And also, zombies can drop money uh, from now on. Um, you might have noticed some money dropping. You might have noticed money coming from the lawnmowers. Um, it is guaranteed that if you use no lawnmowers from the from the first level of night until now, that you will get seven slots by 2-4. Um, seven slots is pretty good. You know, more plants is always better, um, except for when it's not. And that's typically not the case. <laughs> um, but that allows us to take Grave Buster and Chomper and Cherry Bomb in this level. Uh, which is really nice because Grave Buster lets us get rid of those pesky graves. Uh, thank God, because they can be in really, really bad spots. Yeah. Um, and you also might have noticed at this point that the graves aren't always in the same place. And there also aren't always the same number of graves. And you might think that, oh, they're just in the same place for each level, but actually, it's a little bit different than that. They're more of a controlled random. Um, so each vertical column has a specific number of graves tied to it. Now, for that level, so if you look at column 9 on the far right, there's three graves. If you look at column 8, there's two. Well, now there's going to be seven. Uh, now there's going to be one in column 8 because he just grave busted one. Um, but if we were to close the game and open it again and come back into this level, we might get a completely different grave layout as uh, the seed the seed changes upon game close and reopen, not exiting adventure and coming back in. And you also saw um, that so you do have to react to that. Yeah, and you also saw that you can actually jump the pole vaulter with a uh, with a grave buster, which is really funny. I think. Yeah, it's it's just some extra little value out of grave buster that you no might not get in casual play. Um, I typically try to go out of my way so I can make fun of the pole vaulter for jumping over a plant that's not even intending to hurt him or stop him in any way. Uh, also, you, as you can see, each grave busted drops money for us. Uh, money drops in increments of 10, 50, and 1,000. Um, and that might sound a bit extreme, but um, a chance of a diamond dropping, which is what gives us 1,000, is much lower than the chance of a gold coin or silver coin dropping. Uh, with silver coins obviously being the most common, gold coins falling behind. Yeah, and as you can see now, uh, we're starting to get two fume shrooms out. And they do have a limited range, so we can only place them as far back as the leftmost one. But um, we essentially, you know, have a repeater that's hitting the whole lane instead of just the front zombie. And that's why fume shrooms are so good. Uh, because infinite pierce is busted. It doesn't matter what game it is. If you give something infinite pierce, it's probably going to be way too good. Um, which will come into play again a couple times later, uh, actually. Rather than just night. Yeah, and because also we have all the graves busted, this last cherry is easier. Um... Yeah. Nothing to block your cherry bomb, nothing to kind of really influence your decision on whether or not you cherry bomb one area over the other, other than the zombies that spawn there. 
Um, this is the only level where you might actually get to see the screen between levels because it forces you to go there. Um, that was the almanac we just received. It tells you all about all the plants and zombies you've encountered so far. Uh, we are not going to look at that ever. Um, <laughs> well, you should if you're playing <laughs> casually. It's really funny. Yes, it is very funny. I love all of the entries. Um, in fact, my favorite is for the zombie that is introduced in the next level. So I will actually save that entry for the next level um, to tell you about him. But this is 2-5. And now, now you are allowed to say, wait, isn't it just an auto-scroller? Because this level literally is just an auto-scroller. Yeah, it does not matter how quickly you uh, kill these zombies at all. Um, this level will take the same amount of time regardless, with the exception of the final wave, where if we kill all of the zombies as quickly as possible, we will speed the level up by maybe about like four to six seconds, or two to six seconds, it really depends. Um, and the way that we're going to try to do that is um, build a three by three grave layout with a hole in the middle and just stick our cherry bomb in the uh, hole in the middle. Uh, sometimes, the, when you kill the zombie, it gives you sun, which lets us bust all of the graves that don't fulfill that purpose. Um, sometimes it doesn't give you any, any sun, which uh, is really annoying. Yeah, and we actually found out um, pretty recently that the chance that you get a sun drop from a zombie is increased the less amount of sun you currently have in your bank. Um, so while this might influence you uh, to spend your sun more frequently uh, you also might want to hold on to it for that cherry bomb at the end if you if it's looking like you might not get your 150 sun goal yeah um, it's kind of neither here nor there sometimes you need the money assurance sometimes you don't um, it's a difference of like two seconds maximum. <laughs> yeah, pretty so, much. So I know there's one runner who uh, insists that you should just bust as many graves as possible instead of doing the cherry. But I think the cherry is pretty cool, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go for that. Plus, I have an yeah. insane amount of sun. So. All right, let's just hope for not the worst spawn. Oh, that's actually a really good spawn. And that was almost a frame perfect completion of that level. Yeah. Um, the, that's yeah, that's that's pretty good. It was pretty good. Y you can place that cherry bomb before the zombie spawns, so it explodes on the frame that they spawn. Really awesome. Okay, so this is a uh, two six. So two six in is another prediction level. It introduces the football zombie. The football zombie runs pretty fast, and it takes eighty p shots to kill. So. Killing it manually is not viable. We're going to have to either use our potato mine to predict where it's going to spawn and then kill it that way. Um, or uh, we also have something called the Hypno Shroom. And what the Hypno Shroom does is it uh, basically hypnotizes the zombie, makes it turn around and eat everything in its path. Um, so if we don't, so it's not too bad if we miss the prediction. It does cost 75 sun, which is kind of expensive, but uh, okay. All right. I haven't really been paying that much attention to where these zombies have been spawning. <laughs> I'm gonna assume that's that okay. A random guess I is think, always valid. I think valid kind of also. regardless, I wanna I wanna plant it in this in this in this row here. That's uh. Just, just in case, right? This is like the worst row. Might even yeah. work. Anyways, Are you gonna let the lawnmower go in that row as well? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely let the lawnmower go. Um. Yep, and there's the football zombie, and I would like to read to you what his almanac entry says. And quotes. Football zombie makes the big plays. <laughs> that is his function description. <laughs> Each other zombie has pole vaulter, jumps over plants. Um, bucket head has a lot of health. Football zombie makes the big plays. That is defined as his function. This is uh, the last wave right here. Um... Not, I guess I should bother. 
I don't know, I have no idea where to where to cherry. This is not set up very well. We'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> these, the, these levels, these one flag levels can be really tricky because you don't have enough sun to bust all the graves. And in fact, you typically only have enough sun to bust like three or four. So which three or four you choose is very important. Uh, and so you see what Deacon's gonna do here is more than likely use this Hypno on this football zombie to actually take out the rest of that rope for us with the help of this fume shroom here. And this is the exact choice that I would have also made. Um, so it's, you know, there, there, there are definitely like solvable, like it's all a puzzle that you're just solving, I'm gonna say. That's, that's definitely what I think of PVZ as more of, more than anything. Yes, I agree. So this is 2-7? This because... Was... Oh, sorry. Oh, you, yeah. Because, I mean, look at the beginning of this level, you see, boom, grave layout. All right, where am I going to place my first three puff shrooms? Um, what happens if the zombie spawns here? What happens if the zombie spawns there? You need to be thinking of all of these things almost immediately. And that might seem a little overwhelming for a new runner. However, for my first run, I did, like, basically casual strats only. And, um, I got a four hour and 18 minute time. Um, I, I will always remember my first time because I don't know why, but I ingrained it into my own head. It's four, eight, four hours, 18 minutes, and six seconds. Um, <laughs> but that's, um, that's a, very a pretty good, good starting time. That's a very which good is, starting time. Yeah, mine was like a 4.35. Yeah, so just to show you, like, Deacon has improved by an hour over from the beginning of his uh, playtime of speedrunning this until now, which is, um, you know just goes to show you that it doesn't really take that much to bring your time down a lot um because a lot of the changes that you make affect the entire run so if you make one decision change for one level and it applies to every level you've made that decision change for every level and so you've dropped 10 minutes you've dropped five minutes um, and while in other games, you know, it's like, oh, I dropped one second, and that's like really big because, you know, the categories are really close. In this game, you can drop a minute out of nowhere, and it's really exciting, um, especially because uh, I consider this one of those games where as long as your execution is always on point, there will be a chance for you to improve your time. Uh, the RNG might not always be there, but when it is, you need to know how to react to it. Um, and that is the difference between a good runner of this game and a new runner to this game, uh, is the fact that we have those decisions, we have those scenarios already in our head, we know what's going to happen, we know what could happen. Um, unfortunate windowed mode moment. Um. Yeah, the windowed <laughs> mode in this game is very bad. Uh, you can't, like, uh, it's, it's so easy to, like, click out of the window. Um, Yep. Apology. And if you okay. click out of the window, it pauses the game. Yeah, so it's like... And because this is RTA, pausing the game just adds to your time. <laughs> um, and then the other thing is this level introduces the Scaredy Shroom. So the Scaredy Shroom, basically its gimmick is that uh, we... It, 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 it'll shoot zombies. It's a very cheap pea shooter, but it'll hide when you when a zombie gets close to it so here it's basically the opposite of a puff shroom we're gonna try to actually plant them very far back um, yeah. and then and now we've made a repeater for 50 sun so yeah. the game just keeps giving us really really cheap repeaters um yeah, and then um... The, the only other thing about this level is that we want to make sure to save our hypno shroom for the uh ninth 19th wave because uh, there's a potential for a football zombie and if we don't have the hypno shroom we are uh, not going to be able to kill it in a, in any sort of reasonable amount of time so um, otherwise uh, I think this is actually a pretty good time for any donations if there are any. hey pay a donated five dollars good luck deacon so proud of you thank you so much yeah this is uh, for a great cause a great charity um, for Alzheimer's research, um, so all donations are, are hugely appreciated. Um, I do see in the chat, uh, Zephyr Whisper 
yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we just recently reached two pages on speedrun.com for the any percent leaderboard, uh, which is pretty exciting because I, I didn't think he missed one. He missed the 15 sun. Everyone make fun of him. He did it. I watched it. <laughs> Look at that. Fully grown. 185. That's not divisible by 25. <laughs> Probably hit mushroom. Barely faster. <laughs> okay, uh, two yeah, eight, I... eight is a very bad level. Um, basically... Point and laugh. Yes. <laughs> Sun not divisible by twenty five. Vomit in my eyes. Yes. <laughs> All right. So this level introduces the dancer zombie. Uh, so the gimmick with the dancer zombie is that um, it'll only spawn in the first three rows uh, in this level. And it spawns backup dancers in the front, behind, on top of them, and on bottom. The big problem is that the backup dancer in the front uh, actually prevents us from... Uh, it body blocks Ooh, us from doing 50% so rules to the dancers. Yeah, I, I misplanted that. You usually want to plant them in the seventh column to start, otherwise they they will get eaten more often than not. You know, I, I mean, technically your choice wasn't wrong. The zombie was just too fast there. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah. Is, this is wow. Also All a... right. I I think it might spawn in that row. I think this might be the row it's going to spawn in, maybe. I mean, it's the only <laughs> row it can spawn in um, that I can predict, which is... Uh... We just let this go, probably. Yeah, that's what I do. Uh, typically, it's, if I, I get a three stack, I try to let a zombie go in that lane just because of how bad it can be. At home. I want to. No, it's just. This might actually be the right prediction, even though the three zombies. I'm thinking are it's there. right, too. If it's that's in the, the middle, thing. that'll be really funny, though. Okay. Why is it there? That's where a zombie just spawned. And this is a. Uh... That. This is let's, crazy. Uh, let's do this so I can actually plant this scaredy. <laughs> um, well, so for Whisper, wait, how do you guys determine which tile zombie is on currently? It's an, is it the shadows? I can't tell. Um, well, you can kind of look at their front foot. Um, and it's a little bit of just knowing, uh, because there are three zombies that have different hitboxes unfortunately so they're you know they're the ability to predict them is pretty much out the window um but in terms of other zombies they all have pretty consistent hit boxes so as you play the game it just becomes more and more common uh now zephyr to answer your question about or to respond to your michael jackson comment um the original version of this game actually still has michael jackson as does as the back as the zombie as the dancer zombie and he actually behaves wildly differently enough to make it the version with him the actually better version of this game to speed run oddly enough um because he moves faster he moves further onto the screen it's just better for the it's just better for us yeah but i'm um, playing this version we'll see later yeah. um it's for basically for marathon safety um, later on. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Also, um, and they did remove him whenever they came up with the Game of the Year edition, but other than that, uh, he is still in the original. Do not take my shoot. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this level is very similar to 2-7, uh, except now we have this plant called the Doom Shroom, which we're taking instead of the Cherry. So the Doom Shroom, what it does is it kills all zombies in a 5x5 five five, uh, radius, roughly. It's like a weird oval, like a weird mess. Yeah, it is very weird. It's longer on the bottom and in the back than it is on the top and the right, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Which is really weird, but uh, you kind of get used to the hitbox after you use it enough. Yeah, and the, the nice thing about it is it does leave a crater, but it solves all of our problems in the final wave. So, um, and since the final yeah. wave, it doesn't really matter uh, if you leave a crater, um, it's, uh, it's very powerful. Yeah, it's a, it's a screen wipe for 125 sun, which is less than a cherry bomb. It's pretty good. Uh, Doom Shroom is like like probably the best instant in terms of screen clearing 
Yeah. Um, yeah, and Knight the Dragon, yeah, while it is, like, kind of 5x5, five five, it's not really 5x5. Five five. For our purposes, it's a screen wipe because we're going to be placing it in the front and it's going to cover up and down. Uh, and it, it's going to cover the entire column that it's placed in, in front of it and behind it. So we kind of don't really care about the fact that it's not a true screen wipe. For us, it is a true screen wipe uh, because nothing will be outside of that range, uh, at least not here. <laughs> Um, and unfortunately, they do only introduce you to Doomshroom on the last level of night, but it's understandable because it's very, very powerful. Um, I don't I don't know when else they could have ever introduced this in during night, honestly. Yeah, and uh, Night the Dragon, we actually you actually will see some of those opportunities pop up later. Um, in fact, in the next level where it's another conveyor belt and we get a billion of, of them for free, so. I'm not counting the waves properly. Um, so, max stuff. The reason we use them in all the early levels is because of the fact that we could not get money from them. They were, you know, they're just, they give us a fast 50% roll and they also definitely make the wave up make the next two waves not spawn zombies so those are the two main um purposes of that in the beginning but because they start giving us money in night it's kind of very important that we use as little of them as possible um unless we are very secure in our money pace due to the fact that money pace is very important for the rest of this run uh, and while that hasn't really been stressed yet since everything we bought with money so far has been guaranteed there will be another uh, seed slot upgrade coming up, and it's very entirely possible to not have enough money to afford it uh, yeah. when we get there. I actually tend to be more aggressive with money than I should be, or with uh, with mowers than I should be, uh, especially in the next world. Um, but we need money for speedrunning. Uh, I, I don't know if you've caught up yet, Mac, to what I've said. <laughs> uh, but so there's seed slots. Uh, which we will be buying one more of. There's another thing that we're going to be buying later, and then there's also the rake, which we will be buying um, every single time that we're able, save for, I think, like, one level where we skip it. Um, okay, cool. I, I didn't know if you were caught up yet. Uh, but the rake is actually going to be very important once we unlock it uh, in the future. Wow, a dancer zombie. Uh, the Dancer Zombie is directly countered by the Fume Shroom, uh, which is pretty nice. <laughs> Bagel, no. Bagel's, Bagel's one of my cats. She loves to try and grab the mouse from the screen as I'm playing it. Uh, and I'm not even playing right now, so she's just trying to grab Deacon's mouse. It's really funny. <laughs> And you can see the Doomstream just obliterated everyone. <laughs> uh, Imitator is actually not used later on. And the reason it's not, for this speedrun at least, it doesn't exist. is <laughs> it doesn't exist yet. It's not even available until after you complete Adventure Mode, yeah. uh, which is what any percent is. So, uh, however, for 100%, definitely, it's, it's used. Oh boy, is it used. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. The actions. No. The consequences of our actions, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see right there, um, that top zombie didn't die. You can see where the Doom Shroom was placed, uh, thus, you know, confirming the, 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 it's not a screen wipe. It's not, it's not exactly a 5x5. Five five. It's such a weird shape. It's, I, I don't know why. Whatever, they could have made it a lot more simple, but they didn't. <laughs> uh, fume shrooms are 
a godsend in this level. It's really, it's, the, like, fever shrooms are so good, it's not even funny. Uh, this level can be very overwhelming if you have no fume shrooms. Even if you have one in every row, it's still a little tricky, but it's a lot better than if you only have uh, scaredies or puff shrooms, which are actually, ironically, the worst thing, one of the worst things to get in this level because they are just, you know, every plant is really free. squishy. Every plant is free yeah. already, so there's no point. So why do we want puff shroom? Exactly, yeah. If every plant is free, we would want something else. But because Puff Shroom is free normally, that's why it's a value. It's, a, it's Doom Shape. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what Doom Shape means. Is that is that like a, is that a shape that we were supposed to be taught in class? Uh, I'm from the US, we, we, you know, you know us over here. We don't always teach the full things. <laughs> it's shape. Oh, okay, okay, got it. I, yeah, that makes sense. Wow, you're actually getting a lot pretty yeah. frequent Grave Buster luck, which is and not a bad thing so, at all. Yeah, Grave Buster. Oh, a big good. friendly shape. Got it. Yeah, and um, once so so how Grave Buster spawn is it's like a it's like a if if else thing. It's like if there are graves left on the screen, then you can spawn grave busters. If there's not, then you can't anymore. Um, and also, if the number of grave busters is equal to the number of graves on the field, it also won't spawn anymore. Because you will not be able to get rid of a grave buster if there are no graves left, um, which will just clog up your belt. And in the off chance that you get Head the, grave busters and soft the, the level. I think the grave busters only. I think when we looked at the code, um, the grave busters only showed up. Show up if there are graves left. Yeah, they only show up and, if there's graves left, or if there's less graves on the belt than the amount of graves on the field. Yeah, it's, those are the two things. Anyway, so this level here, we're trying to manipulate ice streams because, as you saw, I like used an ice stream and it was a really bad idea. So, it was a disaster pretty <laughs> it was much. A disaster, yeah. <laughs> so uh so we're gonna so we're supposed to try to manipulate them. I was trying to be a little bit too uh I was trying to be, try to be a little bit too clever, but it uh never pays yeah. off when you're too clever. <laughs> also as you can see uh we've we're just pretty much using Doom Shrooms as we get them. Um uh, and in those two rows are pretty much the best spots for us. And while the ninth column is also good for them, we want to save that for our Hypno Shrooms during the level. And then also, since we have two Doom Shrooms, we can actually do this. Yeah, so we'll kill the, the Dancer. We can kill that Dancer before he spawns his backups, which means that we can actually Doom a lot earlier here. Yeah. Otherwise, we have to wait for the backup Dancers to come up. Otherwise, they'll be off screen. So. Yeah, uh, Max stuff. I don't know if you were here for the conveyor belt thing, uh, but when you manipulate the conveyor belt, if you have three of them, their chances go down to five instead of whatever it was, because uh, it does use just flat numbers. And then when you have four or more, it goes down to one out of whatever the pool is. So it's essentially a 1% chance whenever you have four of them. Okay, so um, the zombies have now given us gi given up attacking us at night. Uh, now they're attacking us in the day, but in our backyard. Uh, here we have a pool, and now you're wondering, hey, you had all these great nighttime plants. Why aren't you using them? Well, our nighttime plants are asleep, so they uh, don't do anything. Right. So that's why. Yeah. Uh, this level. Also, um, they are attacking us from the from our backyard now specifically that we did not just randomly put a pool in the front yard yeah. this is a different part of the house um and one thing is for sure you can definitely confirm that the zombies are at least fair because they will not attack you from two fronts at once even though they fully are in are within their right to as as they've established they know how to attack from the front and back of your house but they won't do both at the same time that's just unfair you would never be able to defend that ah. oh. <laughs> oh, well. Ooh, nice yeah again like i did not think that potato mine was gonna arm <laughs> oh i wasn't even worried about that because uh usually it arms if um it usually arms if uh you get the potato mine out before the second 
shy. Or this second yeah. he, he shot. It was very close, though. Usually. So it's very scary. Um, Alright, and that's our first pool zombie, which, in the Almanac, is a different zombie entirely. Um, that is the ducky tube zombie. Um, the only difference is that he is allowed to go in the pool, and that's, that's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> he's just a normal zombie in the pool. Uh, there will also be a variant of the Conehead and the Buckethead that are allowed in the pool, as well as a couple special zombies that are introduced for the pool specifically. Um, that will be seen in later levels in pool. Um, pool is probably the highest skill cap world in the game, I want to say. Oh, it's a ninth wave already. Ninth wave already? I mean, I shouldn't say already. I don't think this was particularly fast. Um, and the awkward part about pool is that you have six lanes to deal with. So a cherry bomb covers half instead of more than half of the lanes. So you're still going to have to probably deal with a good bit of the wave. Um, I got very unless, of I got course, very lucky you get here. this yeah. spawn where you can just cherry bomb it all and it's fine. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a that, that final wave salvaged the level. <laughs> okay. So. Um, the dash ones are pretty volatile. That's yeah. that's just gonna be true forever. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna start the three two to three eight thing, where we kind of take the similar types of plants. You're gonna see kind of the same ideas. Um, basically, the idea is we're gonna take repeater, sunflower, lily pad. So lily pad is a plant that basically lets us plant things in the pool. Otherwise, we can't plant anything there. Um, and then as many instances as we can. So we're gonna take. So we have a potato mine, a squash, and chomper and cherry. Um, and we're gonna do yeah. kind of the similar thing to one nine, where we basically plant up a ton of sunflowers. We're gonna aim for about twenty on this level as well. Uh, although usually I only get out like eighteen. Uh, and then one column of repeaters. And then try to use an instant on every single uh, subsequent wave, usually a cherry, chomper, or um, squash. Yeah. Um, squash is amazing. Um, squash is used in a lot of levels from here on out. Yep. It's 50 sun. It's double the cost of potato mine. Now keep in mind, potato mine only costs 25, but... 25 the the change between 25 and 50 sun early on can actually mean a lot which is why at the beginning of the level potato mine is still better um however squash is more versatile than potato mine ever could be so you you'll see a lot uh, you'll see squash being used a lot in these levels also squash makes a funny noise and has two different voice actors for each of its um for, for each of its noises for some reason i i don't know why um, do the but I, I can do both of them. Yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll try and wait until right before you place it here. Hmm? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I actually have a point redemption on my channel for people to make me make the sound just whenever. In fact, um, I was commentating on Scion's run, who's another top runner, and I made the squash sound because I was asked to, and he thought that he accidentally misplaced his squash and it got used <laughs> up during the level because of how accurate it was, and I was like, oh, that's so flattering. <laughs> um, interesting wave, in interesting final wave there. Yeah, I used uh, the cherry. Like I used the cherry early, so I couldn't do too much. It, and it was still like a 230x. So a yeah, that's definitely faster than a conehead normal zombie night yeah. wave, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so in the pool, you're going to see a lot more punishment for not dealing with um, the sun problem early if you haven't already. Um, so if Deacon came into this flag with uh, like five less sunflowers, then he'd be playing catch up for the whole rest of the level, pretty much. Uh, that's how important sun pace is. I cannot stress enough 
how important it is that you get your sunflowers out. Um, now, the way that you see Deacon placing his sunflowers is actually um, due to a pretty recent development, I would say, in the P in PVZ speedrunning. So what the strategy used to be is you would just plant four more sunflowers in the pool uh, around where that back repeater is. Um, but Scion actually found that you can place um, one sunflower in front of your row of repeaters and it will give them slight protection from a cone head or, you know, being overwhelmed. And also the repeater just fully protects the um, sunflower. And we actually got the football zombie on the final wave there. It was a little slow because he, he can just use waves, the chomper. Yeah. Uh, however, it's still a lot faster than that wave could have been differently. Um, the football zombie has a couple times where it can just be the only thing in the ninth wave, and it's really good when it happens. It was a pretty good, pretty good final wave performance there. Yep. Um, just unfortunate there was a straggler normal zombie. Okay, this level is a uh, three-three. It's going to be very similar to uh, uh, three-two. We're going to take actually the same plants. Uh, but this level introduces the snorkel zombie, which is kind of annoying. Basically, it goes in the pool. Uh, so long as it's underwater, it cannot uh, get hit. So what we need to do is plant a plant in front of it so that it sticks its head out, and then it's finally vulnerable to uh, repeaters. Um, so the lawnmowers in the pool stay lawnmowers until you buy pool cleaners from the shop, which won't be available until 3.5. Uh, that's how they can become pool cleaners. They cost 1,000 coins. Uh, we will not be buying them because... Could buy them, but yeah, I have, I have, the I have a really bad money pace. So. Yeah, there's, there's no point in buying them because it doesn't... Um, it, it only gives us pool cleaners in two lanes and we're not really going to be letting go of the pool lanes a lot um especially because <clears throat> the time to use them uh the zombies don't spawn in the pool fast enough um the pool cleaners are different in the fact that they do clear the whole lane and lawnmowers only um get the zombies like immediately in front of it so if you have a whole row of zombies coming down that lane and you let the lawnmower go uh you will probably die because it will not clear out that row and the reason we don't use the three peter is because it's just it's just too expensive yeah, for too not not enough value yeah so the three peter we'll we'll see the three peter later but basically the three peter is the same price as a uh, pea shooter or as three pea shooters and a lily pad uh but for i guess you don't have to actually plant the lily pad uh you'll if you want to see the three peter if you or do runs with it uh there's i think three slot uh runs use it quite a bit yeah yeah and runs where the amount of seed slots that you have really matters um three peter th things like three peter things that have multi-lane projectiles shot out are very important um because we don't really have a good way to deal with everything otherwise uh we need something to be able to quickly cover all the lanes but here we have seven slots we don't really care uh we can take whatever we want pretty much hmm? Uh, we might see the snorkel zombie here. If not, we will see it in the next wave. It's not here. However, very good spread. All right, that's our snorkel zombie right there. Uh, the snorkel zombie has three wave points, which is an odd number that we have not seen so far. Um, and it jumps into the water and swims under the water and can't be shot by uh, normal projectiles. Um, there are there are plants that can damage it before it comes up to eat a zombie to eat a plant later. Um, however, that isn't even possible until like new game plus. So um, that's not going to be something that we're going to be doing. Um, so Zephyr Whisper actually 100% 
doesn't well technically every run uses three peter with torchwood at some point and that's because that's what 310 is and it forces you to do that um otherwise uh three peter torchwood is just better um and, fa and faster for our purposes okay. a diamond diamond let's go you might actually have eight slots for next level then yeah yeah it's pretty hot i don't that's not very common I, you were a thousand behind money pace. It's, that's so. Yeah. Um, there are a couple landmark points uh, of the run that you want to keep track of pretty much for like. Oh, like heavy reset spots. Uh, can a cherry bomb ever be eaten before it explodes? No. Um, I have had I a don't jack think... in the box destroy it before. Yeah, but it can't be eaten. Yeah. Uh, eaten specifically, no. Can it be disabled? Yes, it can be rendered useless by a jack-in-the-box, unfortunately. Alright, yeah, and now you're going to get your eight slots and also be able to take Tangle Cult and everything here. That's pretty nice. So um, yeah, in the re remaining levels, this is the this is going to be our plant selection where we basically take uh, tangle kelp with all of these other plants. The tangle kelp basically is a squash for the pool. Um, I guess that's a good way of saying it. Um, it. Although it can only kill one zombie, but it's a really good answer for like snorkels. Um, it's designed to be the answer for snorkels. Uh, this level yeah. kind of does this. We are going to spam it out off of cooldown on the first flag, pretty much. Um, to pre-plant it so we don't have to deal with the pool during the first flag anymore. Yes. Uh, that is what Tangle Kelp is going to do for us. <laughs> yeah. But the way that this game kind of works is it, like, introduces uh, a zombie, then then it sometimes introduces the plant to deal with that zombie. Um, but yeah, Tangle Kelp is a really good way of uh, just dealing with the pool for a very low amount of sun uh, if we happen to get pool zombies, which we ideally want, although we don't always... Got it. And... Yeah, and um, if you do look at our seed selection, like Deacon has pointed out before, I'll point it out again. Right now we have Sunflower. We have one resource producer. We have Lily Path. We have one utility plant that is required for the level. We have Repeater, one DPS and literally everything else is made to instantly kill zombies and that is what we will be using it for um because well we want to progress waves as fast as possible of course we want to be instantly killing zombies it just makes sense newspaper better than a cone head <laughs> yeah, newspaper is good like i only have to deal with use it use one repeater to deal with it um it gives me flexibility do i just let this go yeah. Uh, yeah, you could totally just let it go and uh, go with some production here. This is why. Uh, so this is a three flag level, and that's why you see oh, Ethan yeah. um, planting sunflowers in the pool again. Um, this level is long enough and dense enough in zombies to the point where um, those the the first couple sunflowers you can place in front of the repeaters. In fact, I like to place two and then switch to the pool later. Uh, but it's pretty much preference. It just saves you a little bit of sun now and lets you invest into later a little more. Um, it's it's a lot of preference for this. Who designed their backyard like this? That's a very good question. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what home designer approved this look, but um, they should not be a home designer anymore. Um, <laughs> I don't think your entire backyard should be split down the middle by a pool. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this is a three flag level, so basically there's 30 waves Dude, instead of 20. So so the idea here is we're going to be planting um, usually two columns of repeaters. Um, and then when you're doing this level, it's kind of important to try to um, actually get those repeaters out. Because uh, if you don't have them out by the third flag, you are in a lot of trouble. Um, well, actually, chat, Crazy Dave is your neighbor. Crazy Dave is not you. 
Uh, he's just kind of helping you. For some reason, he knows all about zombies and exactly how to deal with them. Um, also, I, I do I do want to bring up another hidden lore since since chat is talking about hidden lore memes. Um, one of my favorite hidden lore things for uh, Pool is the fact that where did the ambush zombies come from? Uh, how did they get into this pool? Um, does the... Oh, another diamond. Wow, okay. Uh, yeah, that's pretty hot. Um, but in terms of the pool, where did these where did these ambush zombies come from? Um, does the player that you are currently playing have dead bodies in the pool? Is that what I'm hearing? The, why are there zombies in the water? This makes no sense. I feel like they should be investigated. <laughs> Uh, lily pads and kelp are currently the only two plants that can be placed on water directly. There is one more that will be introduced in the next world. Um, and then that's it. There's only three. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, what? <laughs> um, so... I, I, I want to stress this enough. I think the chance of a diamond is like one in a thousand. Um, and he just got <laughs> two in a row. Uh, and the chances of them increase with the wave points that that zombie is worth. And he did get them. He did just get that one from a snorkel zombie. So it is a little more likely there. But still very unlikely to get a diamond in the first place. So that's, that's crazy. Um, especially because we were talking about earlier potentially making a detour to have to uh, get the money that we need to show off certain strats and um, ab abilities here. I might do and it. I might do it anyway, just because it's funny, but like... <laughs> yeah, we might not even have to detour. The game just might give us enough money. Yeah, the zombies just go up river like salmon. <laughs> and the key unlocks da Crazy Dave's trunk, uh, which is Crazy Dave's tiddlywinks, which we will be buying the rake for here. Um, the rake, while only 200 gold, and it might not seem that important, what it does is it forces the first zombie to spawn there, and it will kill that zombie when it hits the rake. Um, which might not seem like a lot, but remember, we want to speed up waves as fast as possible. And early on, we don't have the sun to really deal with zombies, so they're a little bit scarier um, in the beginning. Whenever we are kind of like, oh, are they going to spawn here or there? I don't want my potato. I don't want my potato mine to be wasted. Twenty-five sun is a lot at the beginning. Um, however, the rake allows us to balance our instance a lot more. Um, and in the next level, you will see that. And I'm actually kind of excited to uh, show you guys. Yes, this level is glitch free. We used to think that there were glitches in any percent. And then it was found out that the things that we were doing were fully intended um, by the code that we that we had received. Um, so there was there was an ice room glitch that stops the ambush zombies from spawning. Um, fully intended actually uh via the code there was uh there's a glitch later with a plant called garlic and a code called future uh that causes them to move faster um turns out fully intended and the reason being because it breaks the um it actually breaks the model of the zombie and they didn't know they, then they didn't want to have to you know make a new animation for it so they just kind of got rid of it and so it, it, they move faster because of it during that um the code actually we don't have anymore um someone tried to go back to the post pretty recently and it was gone um i'm sure it could be gotten again because the way they got it was through i think like a google pixel or something or like a windows phone um 
and that's the that's the whole reason we could get it. Windows Phone and uh, C Sharp, yeah. So it's a yeah, Windows Phone and C Sharp. That's what it is. Um, so you know, I'm sure it could be gotten again, but we did get like a lot of our information from it already. So I don't really see the point in us needing to look for it again. However, if people would like to look at it, we can we can try and find that again um, or inquire. Yeah, that's the definition of every speedrun. You can make this game go faster or slower. Thank you, Knight the Dragon. Thank you. Anyways, we didn't <laughs> really have time to explain this level. So the zombies are small. They take more hits. You need to count yeah. waves. It's almost an auto-scroller, but not quite. That's that's it. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's almost an auto-scroller. You're right. Uh, you can speed up the waves by like two seconds each. That, that, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. You just want to make sure you have cherry bombs for the 9th, 19th, and 20th wave, and everything else is kind of extra. <laughs> um, this is... That was Jalapeno. We will not be using Jalapeno. All right. Um, now it's on to explaining Zomboni. <laughs> yeah. So this level introduces Zomboni, to which Jalapeno is supposed to be your first counter to. Um, however... Jalapeno's kind of not that great right now. So we're going to just kind of deal with it with one of our other instants because we have so many of them and we can do that. Um, yep, and so right here you can see the rake forcing that first zombie to spawn there. So now we have information. Information is probably the most important thing to PvZ speedrunning. Um, so right now we can place our first potato mine without threat of it being eaten. We can place a squash um, immediately after because we know that the cooldowns line up uh, right there you saw him wait a little bit because sun production is more important yeah, um, also I'd thank, say... thank you Knight the Dragon for explaining that um, to yeah. other people in the chat but then, then really here cool. I'd say the potato mine is a little more important than the sunflower just because you tangle really kelp needed, by the way you really need it to arm in time right tangle kelp yeah <clears throat> yeah and so now now you're gonna see this really cool uh, now, as you saw, that really cool Wall of uh, rotation of instants yeah. where you can just place them off cooldown and uh, get a lot of value out of them, potentially. Unfortunately, we did get the double normal zombie spawn there, which um, actually got rid of both of our potato mines. That is called the uh, the war mech double, or as I like to call it, the mech double. Please don't sue <laughs> me, McDonald's. Um, <laughs> Uh, just because Warmech, who is um, a top speedrunner in any percent and just really PvZ in general, yeah, OG. Um, he cl claims that he doesn't still have it. Meanwhile, just got, I think, the world record in like all, all survivals or normal, all normal one survivals the, or one something. Of the, one of the ILs. Yeah, one of the ILs for normal survivals um, pretty recently. Uh, so cl claims he doesn't have it anymore, but he definitely does. Um, his name's Warmech Gaming, so... Uh, you know, like to like to name bad luck things after after runners, you know, as you do. Uh, make sure that they go down in history as very unlucky uh, when this game is referred to. <laughs> Everyone likes to claim um, they have the worst luck in this game, but uh, yeah. I would say I would say the one person that actually has the worst luck in this game does not have does not run it anymore, and that's. The true OG of this game, which is Super 8 Perp. Uh, and I think he just goes by Perp now. But, yeah, so right here, uh, we're just gonna squash the Zamboni. Uh, yeah, but you can also. The, the game wanted us it. to use Jalapeno. You can also chomper it, which is much funnier. Yeah. Um, hopefully, by if another one comes, we'll be able to chomper it. But uh, I tend to find that using squash is just more consistent for that particular um, one. Zephyr Whisper, I <clears throat> totally know what you mean. Old McDonald and Atomicrops. I love Atomicrops. That game is very fun. Um, I, I totally get that reference. Um, yeah, I, in fact, <clears throat> I on 1-5, on 2-5, on, on you know, Whack-A-Zombie, <clears throat> the level where you are almost guaranteed to get enough sun for the Cherry Bomb every time, Perp is the only person that I've ever watched live get only 75 sun for the entire duration of the level. <laughs> I've got, I've got, I think I've had that app before. Maybe I got in 150 sun as my worst. Yeah, it was... I, I, I've never seen it ever again. Uh, I was just 
completely at a loss for words. I had no idea what to say. Like, how, how do you get luck that bad? <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, yeah, Deacon, Deacon gets pretty bad luck on average, I'd say. Um, except for in marathons, it seems. <clears throat> um, I definitely have very specifically bad luck. Uh, meaning that if one bad thing happens, the entire level's ruined. Everything else that's bad could happen. And as you saw there, the Chomper just ate the entire Zomboni in one bite. Um, and is just chewing the zombie. So I, I don't know where the Zomboni went. <clears throat> but it's somewhere. Yeah, it has a very big mouth. <laughs> and this is Spikeweed. Spikeweed is supposed to be another counter to Zomboni. Um, but we also don't care again because we, we still have Chomper and Squash to deal with it. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. We'll, we'll see all these plants, uh, later in 310. So, uh, we'll, we'll explain them and show how useful they are in general. They are pretty useful. Um, just not for our, for the any percent run. Yeah. Um, in fact, New Game Plus uses spike weed. While any percent does not, which is kind of funny. Yeah, it's um, funny. It's just it's just how the plants happen to work. Um, anyways, this is three seven, so this is basically the same thing, except we're gonna um, except we have three flags that we have to deal with. Um, and we got this thing, so I'm gonna hold off on my sunflower a little bit. Let's see where this goes. Actually, I should have placed that squash down here, shouldn't I? That's okay. We'll have a squash. Yeah, um, it's it's okay because you will have it back by then. So, um, yeah, it's it's not that bad. Um, the only the only bad thing is if the first two the the first three zombies spawn there, then that's bad. Is there anything a chomper can't chomp? Uh, yes, it cannot chomp a gargantuar. Um, I mean it can. But it only does a repeater's worth of damage to it. It does not swallow the entire gargantuar. <clears throat> Alright, not not too bad spawns here. Not too bad of spawns. Now this is great spawns, right? Like, in yeah. terms of the speed of the level. I mean, especially since you, we know that you have enough money for the rest of the run now. And you can just pretty much let go of lawnmowers willy-nilly. Yeah, which I'm doing. I, I generally do this. I usually let go of two lawnmowers per level, which is not smart. I mean, while it is faster and safer than not letting go of two lawnmowers, because it is very easy to get overwhelmed if you're trying to deal with every zombie except for like two in the first wave, in the first flag. Um, it's a lot safer if you do let go of two lawnmowers. However, your money pace will suffer if you don't have the ability to cover it. Uh, so, snorkel zombie. Unfortunately, things have gone a bit too fast, so I'm gonna have to be start playing catch up a bit. Which, uh... Yeah, and luckily for us, um, now, now, now you might see him place repeaters a little close to some normal zombies, and you might go, oh my god, what is he doing? That thing's gonna get eaten. Uh, fun fact, a repeater can kill a normal zombie within one tile. Um, that's, that's how good the repeater is. Um, because a pea shooter can do it in three or more, um, while a repeater can do it in one or more, so... I, I, I don't know how times two makes it, you know, like 66% better, but, you know, I, I will take it. I think that sunflower was a mistake. Uh, this is, this is actually looking pretty weird in spawns. Snorkels are kind of awkward to deal with if you get a lot of them back to back, just because of the fact that, you know, you can't deal with them instantly a lot of the time. Uh, however, since this is a three flag level, we are more than likely going to be getting up double repeaters in every row at some point. Um, so they become pretty trivial once you just throw a lily pad down in the beginning. And they can actually even take damage on the way in if there's uh, any keys left over. 
Apparently not. Um, I, keep, I keep miscounting. It's a very yeah, uh, theme this run. So, so uh, an important number to remember for the final, for the huge wave, or the ninth wave, for the second flag is seven. Um, it is the first wave to have seven wave points. And so right there, you saw we got two cone heads and three normal zombies, which adds up to our seven wave points. Yes, the plants do stop taking damage uh, once the head pops off. And that's important because also all plants that are not walnut, tallnut, and pumpkin have exactly five bite sounds of damage that they can take. And I know that that sounds weird, but if you listen to the zombie eat, you know, it goes chomp, 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 and like that, like that loud sound. <clears throat> and what the game is doing is taking it down like incrementally, like every every frame or so. I, I can't remember what exactly it is. Um, but at least for an audio cue for us, all, all you have to remember is five bytes, um, which is which is really important because that that means you know like you you know exactly how much health your your plants have left. You know if you can afford to let a zombie get to them. Um, here you can actually see the zomboni get blown up by a potato mine, which is a really cheap way to deal with it. And that thing you see off the side of the right screen there is the ice trail, which is also part of the uh, Zamboni's unique gimmick. Um, typically, you don't get to see the ice trail because we kill him immediately. However, you don't kill him immediately. In casual play, you might see this. Um, the Zamboni will leave behind ice trails. Uh, the ice trails will spawn bobsled zombies, which is a team of four zombies, but it only has three wave points. So it's actually worse if you get a bobsled team instead of a spawn of three normal zombies. All right, so that's the torch wood. Currently, not going to use it. Um, not not needed. However, in the next level, we might use it. Uh, I'm pretty sure Deacon oh, will. Okay. I, I think Deacon is also Team Torchwood. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, so this is 3A. This level, it's the same plant selection, uh, but it introduces the uh, dolphin zombie. Uh, the dolphin zombie is basically the pole vaulter of the pool. It goes extremely and fast. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then jumps over the first plant, then slows down. Um, the dolphin is also a zombie, as uh, we'll see in the uh, end credits scene. Uh, that's just a little fun fact. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, this, the beginning part is going to be very uh, similar. Oh, that... Yeah, so the levels um, from 3, 4 on are... From 3-4 to 3-8 are pretty much all the same in terms of plant selection. The only thing different between them is execution. Also, Max stuff to answer your question, um, it doubles the damage and it does splash damage to all targets around it. And I think we saw that it's, what, 60% of a normal P shot or is it 40%? Uh, 60. 60%. Um... So um, the Torchwood not only doubles our damage output, it also gives us splash damage, which is very important because as we've established before, having Pierce is very good whenever you're very yeah, overwhelmed. Yeah, we'll, we'll see the power of the Torchwood uh, in the next level. Next level yeah. and, and in 310 probably too, because that's the entire intended strategy of 310. Well, I don't get Torchwoods in 310. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, everyone yeah, well, thinks we'll they have the worst RNG, but I've literally never had a good 310. Yeah, um, meanwhile, the first time I ran New Game Plus, I all, I was two seconds off the global gold for uh, for 310 New Game Plus. Um, and my, my video was the global gold for a while because there was no video for the actual global gold claim. Um, but then, but then Scion went and did it better. So, of course he did. Wow. Um, 
Getting lawnmower value on the huge wave is pretty rare. Uh-oh. That's okay, you have Tangle Cup for this. Um, so the dolphin zombie will not jump over any plants in the ninth column. That's why you saw him place that in the eighth column. Um, and the reason he pre-planted the squash is because the dolphin zombie only has a very small window after it lands to where the squash can target it because it has a very far forward hitbox like the pole vaulter does. Um, there's also a way that we can deal with dolphin zombies that involves a ninth column lily pad and a chomper. However, you pretty much need to either have the fastest reaction time in the world or have pre-planted it um, in order to get that. I accidentally found out about this because I just happened to have a chomper there and a dolphin zombie spawn and it, I didn't see it anywhere and I saw my chomper eating. I was like, did, did my chomper just <laughs> eat the dolphin zombie? And so I sent it to the Discord and I think YMB was like, oh yeah, I've had that happen before. And I was like, this is very important information. <laughs> I was like, YMB. <laughs> no, I think YMB used that in world record as well. Yeah. But, like, I just think everyone skims over it because it's, it's not talking It's so about it. hard, though. Like, it's so hard to pull off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that is a spawn. Yeah. There is. I, I I I hate double spawns. They're they're so bad for you. That's okay. Um, but yeah. So we're going into our final wave here now. Another interesting fact about final waves, I don't think that we brought up, is that every zombie that can spawn in the level has to spawn during the final wave at least once so you will see at least one dolphin zombie in this final wave one cone head and one normal zombie and then the rest are filled in by the wave points ah by the wave points that are left over uh the only time that this isn't true i believe is the dash 10 levels um because there have been a couple of scenarios where you just don't don't see uh, um, a zombie that you were expecting to and i don't know why <laughs> yeah so here um we're gonna take porchwood so this is another three flag level um but what we're gonna do is we're not taking potato mine and we're gonna actually the first flag is generally quite a bit slower uh because we really do need to get out our repeaters uh because what we're gonna find is that two repeaters and a torchwood are incredibly powerful uh, they can even like get decent 50% rules on bucket heads. That's that's how good they are. Um, so in like a normal level, we would maybe get out like two or three repeaters. Uh, here, I want to probably try to get out four repeaters. Um, because we don't have potato mine though, um, we don't have as many instants that we can really pre-plant. So. Um, and you also don't want to pre-plant your squashes too much because there are uh, pole vaulter zombies that'll show up um, and you really want to have plants to deal with them. They're really kind of the worst thing about this level. Also, I see some tall nut pog champs in the, in the chat. Um, I am going to offer up my, uh, my emote that I have for my channel. This is uh, Explodo Hype modeled off of the Explodo Nut and Komodo Hype. <clears throat> also, um, we only use Tall Nut in 3-10 uh, because we kind of have to. Otherwise, it's, you know, same, same <clears throat> kind of philosophy as Walnut. It's like, um, we don't really need to protect our plants because we are killing the zombies so fast that it doesn't really matter. Um, there, there's some other couple of intricacies with waves, um, but I, they're, they're a little bit complicated, so I'm, I, I want to delve into them, but it, like, I don't want to nerd out about it because no one's going to understand what it means. Um, however, these spawns are not terrible, so, you know, we'll take it, um, this this first this first flag was really really great uh, for yeah. this strategy. Typically, you don't you don't see good luck for the first flag. Um, 
Oh, I've turned into a robot. Okay. Yeah, it was kind of a little jarring, but uh, it's okay. We, we got through it. Um, nope. I really need more sunflowers. Hello? How's my, how's my audio? How's my audio? Okay, I, I, I just unplugged my mic and plugged it back in. That seems to work a lot of the time. No, this time it was probably just... It, it happens. <laughs> um, yeah, so this level is... I, I guess I guess there's a formula-ish to it. It's you want to place your repeaters, and then you want to place your torchwood, because it's better than placing another repeater. Yeah, and occasionally um, I will... Okay, this is getting a little slow. But uh, occasionally I will plant like a uh, like a repeater if my torchwood is off cool is on cooldown. But uh, you can see that. But yeah, more more scenarios than not, the torchwood will be the better placed option. Yeah. Because it's essentially like you place another repeater in terms of dealing damage to that front zombie, but then it also adds the splash damage on, which just makes it better. Yeah, and so now we've almost got all of these torchwoods out, and we're going into this third flag soon, so you're going to be seeing the real power of uh, this strategy. I mean, even now, you can see the power of that splash damage. Instead of having to deal with that normal zombie individually afterward, we get to deal with it while we deal with the cone head, which lets you kill them both at exactly the same time. It's it's really great. Just what Torchwood does for us. And we no longer have to worry about uh, these uh, pole vaulters. <clears throat> uh, when we have two repeaters and a Torchwood. And yeah, you can see now we're just melting all the zombies suit quickly. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Zephyr Whisper, I will say that this game can get very stressful, but there's there's a couple relaxing spots. Um, there, and as, as no, relaxing as the gameplay no is, spots. watch. <laughs> this is like as a most, couple. As, <laughs> this is the most stressful <laughs> speedrun I've ever done. <laughs> I mean, yeah, your brain is running at a thousand miles per hour the entire time. There's almost no, no time to sit down. Yeah. Yeah, and you can just see these double repeater plus torchwood just absolutely shred through these cone heads and these normal zombies. It, it just like the the waves, yeah, the waves with only these with only normal zombies and cone heads are just absolutely mowed down by this strategy. Does your hand ever cramp? Yes. Deacon, does your hand ever cramp during any percent? Uh, yes. <laughs> My hand doesn't cramp during any percent. Another diamond. Okay, well now you have roof cleaners, so. All right, I guess. You don't even have to detour for roof we cleaners. Won't, guess we won't detour. That's a shame. But, uh... Wow. This is crazy. Uh, this is really just marathon life right here. Uh, but my hand does not cramp during any percent anymore. Um, however, and not even actually during 100%. The only category that my hand actually cramps up during is all Steam achievements. Uh, of which Deacon it, and I are the only two current runners. Uh, and I am the world record holder of because he did it first and then I did it afterward looking at his notes <laughs> that he made during the run. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so this level... Um... Intro or we use every plant that was introduced in pool. Uh, there are a few that uh, were introduced that we never used, um, which maybe we'll see. A tall nut, yeah, that's a that's a, a plant. I think some offensive plants might do us really, go really, really good job here. <laughs> Is it even? Yay, three Peter. Oh, okay. So three Peter, uh, we we mentioned uh, it's. Uh, Basically, three pea shooters and a lily pad. Yeah, you're probably gonna have to tall nut that. Um, <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> tall nuts are like walnuts, but uh, more expensive and more powerful. Uh, it's kind of sad, yeah, that we had to uh, use it for this purpose. 
Um, yeah, so our main damage of this level is going to be coming from a 3 Peter Torchwood combo. Yeah. Um, Torchwoods don't have that high of a chance to spawn, but we only need six of them for the level to go well. So, uh, hopefully we can actually get six of them. Uh, the, that's not a guarantee. Hopefully we get three Peters as well, because, uh, those are, those are nice. <laughs> also very required. <laughs> um... I'm telling you, these levels never go well for me. It's a good thing that you can actually use these Tangle Cups, because... Yeah, the Tangle Cups are very helpful for, like, cool bucket heads. I love, love getting cut off in the middle of talking because yeah. of my cats. <laughs> uh, but typically, typically Tangle Cups go unused in this level. Um, because, well, if they're not useful during the first flag, they're kind of just unuseful because everything's getting absolutely shredded by a screen full of three Peters and Torchwoods. And here you're gonna see uh, the Tallnut do its job for us. Yeah, so the Tallnut is very good at blocking um, dolphins from uh, doing anything bad. Very scared of this. Remember, you have a you have a spike bead right now. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yep, and here you can see the spike bead do its purpose. It can pop one tire on a zamboni, or it can deal area of effect damage. Uh, if you put a torchwood directly in front of a three peter, does it ignite all the peas? No. But if you look at the three Peter in the, the the furthest up three Peter right now in the second row, um, you can see that its peas, all three of its peas are being ignited. So if you put a torchwood right next to a three Peter, it will ignite that pea uh, because the peas all come out in the same in the same column. Uh, even though it might not stay there it might not look like that that is where they all originate from uh with their hitboxes wow you actually have six yeah it's okay. crazy um yeah now we've kind of introduced all the plants so now we kind of and we're gonna kind of just chill the rest of this so this would be a good time for a donation KP donated $25. Mom says good luck too. Thank you, Mom. That's scary. Oh, we're going to see the bobsled team. There we go. Bobsled team. Their bobsled got shredded. Space on the conveyor. <clears throat> yeah, this is probably once you get all of your stuff up, one of the less stressful levels. But then, you know, things like this can happen, and it then becomes one of the more stressful levels. So, um, if if you were to do a bathroom break during a run, you could try and do it on this level after you have everything set up. Yeah. However, there is a very real possibility that you die. Uh, or you miss a diamond, which is even worse. Yes. That was pretty good for my standards. But... All right, so now the uh, zombies have given up attacking us in the day again, so now they're attacking us at night. And then the big issue with this level is that uh, there is fog because there is a pool and there's water. Uh, and half the level is blocked by it, so uh, we're going to be doing half the level, or doing this level without being able to see half of it. Uh, so yep. we're going to have to use a lot of audio cues, particularly for this level, for a uh, 4-1. Uh, Four One also introduces the Sea Shroom, which is the Puff Shroom of the pool. It has a longer cooldown, but um, it's also free, so it's amazing. Yeah, and while while not nearly as good as the Puff Shroom, since the Puff Shroom is you know 
uh, like free and can be spammed out on the land. It's still it's still very good for early cool. Um, and the reason we don't buy rake on this level is because the rake comes up for three levels. Um, there's an interaction with four five that we want to buy the rake on that level specifically, and. In order to line that up, we actually have to wait here to buy the rake on the next level. Yeah, the alternative is to buy the rake on uh, three six instead of three five, which is a little bit slower, and you don't necessarily need the rake on this level. It's like a bit of a trade off. Uh, we're gonna. In be fact, um, fog rakes in general were a pretty. Um, dividing topic for a really long time <clears throat> however warmech was always like team team fog rake he warmech has always been team fog rake <clears throat> and so when i joined the community i was like oh okay well then fog rakes you know should probably be useful right i mean i personally didn't find them that useful but i wanted them to be useful so next level we'll be seeing a strategy that <clears throat> i came up with which is actually taken from new game plus and put into any percent um just slightly different to execute and <clears throat> um that strategy is actually going to yeah, we'll, be called we'll saving the rake and yeah, we'll, we'll see that we'll on the see next it level on the next level hopefully <laughs> there's a lot of stuff we're not going to see on this level on these levels Ooh, yeah there's the, oh, well i wonder where it is it's in the second row Oh, and there was one in the pool. <laughs> oh, that can happen. Yeah, that so that's what happens in fog on on four one at least. But now we have the plant turn, so we are allowed to see. Yeah, <clears throat> invisibility is uh, really important in this level. So every, anytime we can take uh, something like the plant turn, we will. All right, row five. And what we're gonna do is plant now... two puff shrooms <clears throat> on the rake. Um, because uh, basically it'll turn that into a repeater. It'll usually kill the first zombie that shows up uh, before the rake is used, which will let us then save the rake for something like a conehead later. Um, or And also it just kills the first zombie faster than uh, the rake would, so it's just a faster wave anyway. <laughs> That's pretty great. Um, something that I like to do because I'm risk, because I like to be risky is I will put <clears throat> those two there and then i will dedicate two puff shrooms to another lane so that i have two repeaters and two open lanes instead of two repeaters two pea shoot uh one repeater and two pea shooters in an empty lane how do we know where the rake is is it always the same spot no it's um it shows you at the beginning of the level before the fog rolls in so you have to be paying attention for that <clears throat> So and that is a very specific spot that we put the planter in, which will give us full information for the time being. And you might be thinking, oh, well, some parts of the level are still covered. Um, and here we can actually use this rake to, uh, you know, yeah, put our like, resources elsewhere, not a, to think it, about it. It would have if I hadn't planted that extra. Yeah, if you hadn't dedicated the pop room to that already. Right. Just wanted to um, throw that off. Yeah. And so now what we can do um, is because of that rake, you know, normally if you don't have that, if you didn't place a puff stream, you can place it somewhere else and that helps you snowball a little better. Um, whereas a cone head normally means, oops, I have to dedicate a ton of firepower to that lane. And now I'm going to probably have to put like three puff shrooms down there. Um, but the rake, saving the rake allows us to go get around that for a wave potentially. In fact, um, the best case scenario of it is on this level and it's only happened to me once. So on the 19th wave on here, a football zombie can spawn. And I have gotten this scenario only one time where the football zombie spawned in the rake row and got killed by the rake for free after I had used the squash on the 18th wave. It was insane. It's it's the best scenario that could happen. And it's only possible if you save the rake. A lot of normal zombies. That's what we want to see. Uh, especially with our scaredy shroom setup. 
Yeah, the scary yeah, bargain. are going to basically be the way that we deal 50% rules on in, the, in these nighttime levels. Yeah. I, I don't know about you, but I used to hate Scaredy Shroom casually. Oh, I definitely. did not like definitely, Scaredy Shroom at yeah. all. I thought Scaredy Shroom was a terrible plant. I thought it was poorly designed. I did not want to use it ever. And now it's like the main firepower so staple of it's fog. Just, it's just <laughs> so, so good. cheap. And like here we have like three repeaters of damage just on this cone head. So the yeah. fo fog is just for 75 sun. <laughs> Fog is just one of the fastest levels because because of yep. Scaredy Shroom. Yeah, the only reason that Fog is slower than Day is because Day has three levels that are way shorter than every other level in the entire game. Um, they, like, there's no measuring up to 1-1. One, one. It's literally a level that's not even a minute long. Meanwhile, every other world's one, every other world's dash one is well over like two minutes, sometimes even three. Um, yeah, but now, also Doom, uh, we just Doom the entire final wave. This is yep, generally the good Doom spot, <clears throat> so. All right, so um, unfortunately we did not receive a plant at the end of that level. <laughs> um, so we're, we're, we're just gonna have to go with the same strategy again and ignore that text box that pops up. Um, now, you might be wondering why I'm ignoring Cactus completely. Uh, does Cactus deserve the disrespect? The answer is yes. Um, cactus is a terrible plant. Cactus is poorly designed, and I will always, always, always think that. Um, it's given to you. It costs 125 sun. By the time the balloon zombie comes around, you definitely do not have 125 sun to spend on the cactus to deal with it. So you're better off letting it go to the lawnmower, which is what we do anyway. <clears throat> Um, not only that, it's more than it costs more than a pea shooter, and does the same damage as a pea shooter. So you're literally only placing it to deal with a balloon zombie. And immediately at the end of this level, you are introduced to a much better answer to the balloon zombie. So not only did they not make cactus useful in its own introduction level, they also made cactus immediately irrelevant as soon as the level ended. <clears throat> Um, even though the cactus, um, can reach up to shoot the balloon zombie, there are levels later where it would make sense for it to be able to do that, and it just never does. Um, something small that they could have added to actually make it a good option, but, uh, you know, you can't, you can't go back now. This game came out, what, 13 years ago? Almost 14 now. And here's that balloon zombie. So the balloon zombie spawns with a normal zombie, and we are hoping that we don't get an exact 50% roll here, which is the only scenario in which the wave, the next wave does not immediately spawn. Uh, and that is because the balloon zombie and the normal zombie have exactly the same amount of health, save for the balloon. The balloon has a single hit point. And so since the balloon zombie has exactly the same amount of health as the normal zombie, if you add one, the other side, that means if the balloon zombie is still alive, you do not hit the 50% roll. If the 50% roll has rolled to be exactly 50%. Uh, it doesn't happen a lot, but it's very annoying when it does. I have like no sun. Okay. Well, you have enough. Yeah, cool. And this is the Blover, um, the immediately better replacement to Cactus. Um, I don't understand their design choice here. It makes no sense to me. <laughs> so what up, Blover? Now this is 4-4, one of the worst levels in the game. Uh, no, you, yeah, go on, Blover. Uh, where was the rake? Oh, it's in this. Okay, so yeah. Blovers, what they do is um, they blow away the fog and they blow away balloon zombies. So it's kind of a two for one of awesome things. Uh, the only issue is that it does cost 100 sun. Uh, which means we're not going to actually be able to use it until the second flag uh, because we're not going to have enough sun. Uh, so we're going to have to do this first half uh, without being able to see anything, uh, which is really annoying. But um, we do have Tangle Kelp because there are dolphins, uh, but Tangle Kelp also makes it a little bit easier to deal with any pool zombies. Um, and then I think uh, Easy Pig can go on his rant about a uh, cactus <laughs> versus Clover. <laughs> 
So even just mathematically, cactus is bad. So if we put a cactus in every single lane, including the two lily pads in the pool, we have six cacti six cactuses or cacti, however you want to say it, it doesn't matter, uh, and two lily pads for a total of, I believe, 800 sun. And the problem with this is that Blovers cost 100 sun. You will never place a Blovers in a level. Uh, and if you do, then you have probably gotten pretty bad luck. Um, but even in the worst case scenario, you are placing less Blovers than you would have to place cactus Cactuses to actually cover the entirety of the level. Um, so... Blover is not only just better as a sun equivalent, it also instantly kills the balloon zombies, uh, where Cactus instead brings them from the air to the ground, meaning that they have a chance to body block a higher zombie, they have a chance to... Uh, they're now added to the wave hit points, so you actually have to deal the damage to them. But we've already been over the fact that we want to deal uh, with them as quickly as possible with instants, um, you know, as... as as many times as we can so the blover is just better in like every single possible scenario uh and it's really unfortunate because i would like to see the cactus be good um in fact a lot of mods what they will do is they'll give the cactus pierce or they'll give the cactus like a triple shot or something um so, like the, and they actually feel like impactful changes um also you might have just seen that really weird interaction with tangle kelp um, being like a full space in front of that dolphin zombie and still it getting pulled down and that is a byproduct of its hitbox being so far forward um, and, and Deacon just missed a 15 sun drop so everyone make fun of him um, uh, point and laugh, point and laugh um, this is a, a weird wave and yeah I don't I don't understand the, the, look at that that make it just why <laughs> and uh their their hitbox is being uh way too far forward is fully intended not it's not a glitch at all uh which is really sad minus 15 sun moment oh it's drunker Uh, 4-4 four, four is one of the worst levels in the run. It can really, really, really screw you over. Uh, the combination of dolphin zombies and balloon zombies forcing you to take Blover or pretty much just res uh, resign yourself to death um, and not enough ways to deal with the dolphin zombies actually makes this a pretty hard level if the RNG swing is not in your favor. Yeah. Um, so we were talking about buying rake on this level before, and the reason is, is because 4-5 actually counts as three levels, technically, uh, when it comes to the rake, and we really want it for specifically the last one in this set of le levels here. Um, we are being introduced to Vase Breaker, which is going to be a puzzle, uh, that will be introduced to... Um, in a little bit, uh, you know, like earlier with the mini games <clears throat> drop, uh, something very similar to that. Um, and in that first one, we get enough squashes to just deal with everybody. And in this one, we don't get quite enough, but we do have the ability to kind of face them into each other. Um, now, unfortunately, the rake is just completely wasted here. Um, however, okay, not, not wasted, I guess, but, you know, it did something. Uh, ideally what happens is the backup dancer walks onto the rake and immediately dies, spawning no backup zombies that we have to deal with. Uh, however, um, oh, I was gonna say you should place that Hypno Shroom on those two zombies to show off that glitch. Oh. Um, there, there is a glitch where if a hypnotized zombie and a normal zombie are eating each other, the hypnotized zombie will actually eat the Hypno Shroom. Um, and the normal zombie will not. It, I, I'm not entirely sure why, but it's it's a weird glitch. Be aware of. Um, Raiko Nalo, the MJ zombie is only in the original version of the game. 
uh, the Game of the Year edition, um, out of respect um, and maybe legal action, uh, uh, Avoidance decided to patch it to uh, the Disco Zombie. Uh, so this is 4-6. We are introduced <clears throat> to the bigger zombie here, or the minor, um, if you want to call him that. And <clears throat> he will dig under all of your plants and pop up in the back and actually move, walk from the left to the right instead, eating your plants from behind. Now you might just think, why don't the plants just turn around? Um, because they can't. Um, and that's going to have to be a good enough explanation for you because that is the explanation. Um, however, there is the split pea that we were just introduced to, and the split pea fires as a repeater behind it and a pea shooter in front of it. Unfortunately, this plant is very bad, and we will not be using it. Um, instead, we will be trying to predict where the, uh, where the digger's going to spawn and kill him with the potato mine. Um, we did not get the prediction. It's because there are four levels. Maybe. There are four rows in this level. Um, we didn't. And so basically, there are four rows. You can put the potato mine, and we got the double normie spawn. So um, not really much we can do because the, that covers all four of the rows. Yeah, and so um, the the potato mine. Um, actually can hit the digger zombie because, you know, it stays underground to arm. And actually, we will be using this on the final wave. Um, we can use the potato mine to stall the digger zombie since it is so fast. Um, we don't want it to go out of our doom range that quickly, so we are going to be using the potato mine to stall him, uh, for this last wave here. Um, specifically in one of those, specifically in that row, uh, that column that was just dug up. <clears throat> So we're just gonna wait, see where he spawns. And now you will see him be stalled. Which is uh which is a neat interaction. Yeah, and it saves so much time because the dig digger zombie is so easy to miss, as you will probably see in yep. this level. Uh this level is also one of the worst levels. Uh because there are bucket heads and digger zombies, but <clears throat> we don't really have any plants to deal with them except chompers. Um and Chompers are really expensive. Um, it's uh, it's just a very poorly designed level. It's uh, very annoying. Um, there are other, yeah, there and are... while it's probably intended that you take star fruit here, but it, that, that's, that's just too slow. Um. <laughs> it's too slow, too expensive. Um, I think the other thing is there are a lot of competing strats for this. Like you can substitute scaredy for squash. Uh, you can substitute chomper for squash. Uh, the Global Gold substitutes Chomper for Squash. That is a very bad strap for a variety of reasons, in my opinion. But um... so, so KCCP. Um, unfortunately, they can all be the worst level. Um, <laughs> but but I would. It really depends. I There's... would say that this is one of them. That like top five, maybe. <laughs> it, it really depends. The RNG can like work out really well in this level where you don't get any digger zombies, but then sometimes you get a lot of them and then it becomes the worst level. Uh, it, it really depends. Yeah, I'd say Fog is probably the most inconsistent world. And while it is one of the fastest, it's very inconsistent. And the time can vary per level for what seems like no reason. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'll feel like the level's going really well and then I'll check my timer and I'm 20 seconds behind at the end of the level and I have no idea what I did wrong. It's just, it's, it's, it's just usually, fog. It's usually the spawns that, uh, like, if you get yep. a lot of cone heads, then it's like, like, it's, mm -hmm. there's no way to make that fast. And, yeah, like, I get, here I, here, I get a, here I get a cone head in, like, the worst possible row. I think this mm -hmm. is, uh, this is not the ninth, is it? Okay. At least it's not the ninth. Thank God. Yeah, okay, we got a good ninth, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. Gonna... Also, I know that you mentioned the other strategy of the squash chomper. Yeah. And I am only a fan of that strategy just because it is the best case scenario strategy. Um, so for something like someone who's going for, like, you know, the perfect solved world record, they would want to go for that strategy. However, the odds that they get the perfect RNG for that strategy are a lot less likely than getting good RNG for this strategy. Yeah. And then 
The other thing is like when you have bucket heads, one thing you can do is just stack a lot of firepower. Uh, like, I shouldn't have minded that. Uh, and then you can get 50% rules, like, reasonably quickly on bucket heads, but, you know, you just chomper it, it's a little bit... Alright, Digger, if you're gonna spawn, spawn now. <laughs> um, so a Digger zombie can spawn at any point in the second flag, and the worst time for it to spawn is in the 19th wave, which is totally possible because we don't want to use the Doomshroom on it uh, because that would, you know, not have us have the Doomshroom for the final wave. Um, however, it's a lot of time loss uh, and we can just use the Chomper on it once it gets to the end, but we also do have to wait for its full animation of it getting out of the ground and becoming undizzy. Um, it's just the Digger Zombie is so annoying to deal with. Um, now that one is not that bad because it is not. It's not mine. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God! Two in the same lane. Uh, so here you're going to be seeing that you have to wait for this animation to finish. Then he will take one step, and now Deacon can cover him. Uh, but I don't. I don't know what the response is for him. Nope. Nope. Dang. That's yeah, really that was, unfortunate. I was worried that was going to happen. Yeah, and look, like, I don't understand why is the to, chomper not eating him. Yeah, it has to eat something. It, it makes no sense. Something. It's really, really bad. Yeah, so we had the worst like, thing that could have happened. But... Yeah. And then here's another worst thing that can happen is you can doom this and miss the digger, which I didn't. But then there's this, oh, there's always this slow zombie that, like, you can't, you can never get. Oh, it would have been faster to plant that sea shroom. So this is the pumpkin. Yeah, and that's why that's why four seven is so bad is because there's just time loss that you can't do anything about. Yeah. Uh, pretty much. <laughs> uh, uh, the, so that was the pumpkin, which is not useful now, but will be very useful later. Yeah, it turns your it turns your plant into a walnut. Uh, makes it take thirty bites to eat. Um, and now this is four eight. So this level introduces the. Pogo zombie. Uh, so the pogo zombie jumps all over all your plants and then uh, goes to the lawnmower. But um, it does get shot, so it's like vulnerable. But yeah. So ideally, we save the rake here, and then the pogo zombie spawns in the row with the rake in it. Uh, this is actually tied for as fast as a squash can kill the pogo zombie, I believe. Um, so it's just a free, fastest wave you can deal with that wave, uh, potentially. Um, but that's best case scenario. I've only had it happen a couple times. It's not that unlikely. Um, so it is worth it to go for it. Um, and saving the sum for that squash can be very important because this level is very fast. Also, I'm sorry for my roommate's dog. He literally barks at nothing outside. Um, I'm, I can probably guarantee you that there's nobody in front of our house. Uh... <laughs> So that's the Pogo Zombie. Did not spawn in that row, but the reason we left open that back spot is so we can put a Scaredy Shroom and it can deal that damage, that chip damage. So we're guaranteed the 50% roll. And also, typically, so we don't have to give up a lawnmower because you typically don't want to give up fog lawnmowers because it's just free money um, because you have Pup Shroom and Scaredy Shroom. <clears throat> Ooh, coming head in the pool, but we do have our squash. Well, Oh, never mind. Not coming in the pool. Never mind. Uh, you do have your other planter, though. Yeah, this is actually pretty good. <clears throat> pretty, pretty okay spawns right now. Good spawns. I have a lot of sun as well, so... What does the lamp do? The planter lights up an area around it in an oddly not, like, kind of circular shape. Um, basically, it just gives us information, which is the most important thing to EVZ speedrunning. Magnet room. Oh, what a beauty. Yeah, so now we finally have a plant that's good for dealing with both digger zombies and bucket heads. Um... <laughs> so, um, there you go. Yeah, we, we got it. Oh, I forgot Rake. That's okay. Uh-oh. You were supposed to remind me. That's okay. Um, yeah, so um, 
Yeah, this level is just a two flag level. It combines everything that we've learned, but now we have magnets, which is actually a good way of uh, dealing with bucket heads. Uh, we also have uh, balloons, so we have to take Blover. Um, well, Pendle Steven in chat, I will say that the almanac entry for Planturn verifies that Planturn is magic. Um, it literally creates light from dark. It consumes darkness and emits light. It's the opposite of what a plant normally does in terms of what it consumes. Planturns literally eat darkness instead of sunlight. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know either, but yes, Planturn is confirmed to literally just be magic. Uh. But yeah, Magnet is immediately useful and will be used two more times throughout this run. However, the two times that it is used, or it can be used two more times throughout this run, um, the one the one time it has to be used, um, and you will see why it is the hardest level in the run. Uh, not necessarily the worst, but definitely the hardest. Where? Where's this thing? Okay. Right there. <laughs> Found it. Yeah, this is the hard part of levels like 4-9. Yeah, having the rank um, would have been nice so that I'd have a little bit more information. Yeah. Uh, yeah, science. Knight the dragon. want to see bucket heads. Bucket heads give us instant 50% rules. Yep. I just planted that lily pad, which uh, made it a little bit less instant. Still good. Um, pogo zombies can use our magnets, but that's that's not what we want. Um, yeah. That's actually kind of bad for us. We would much rather the bucket. We would much rather the magnet take a bucket than uh, than a pogo. Um, because there is a cooldown and they are reusable, which makes them very, very useful. Nice. Ooh, double win. Yeah, two for one. It's not usually, you don't usually get two for ones in uh, this just because the uh, scaredies hide when the balloon gets close by, but. Um... <laughs> We got the rare death animation. Yeah. Um, this one, it, it is considered rare. I know I've seen it a billion times now, but it is the rarest death animation. <clears throat> Look at all those bucket heads. They bite all those bucket heads. Um, quick epilepsy warning, there is uh, flashing lights on this level. <clears throat> yeah, so here there's no fog, but um, the level is dark for the vast majority of the time, which uh, makes it very annoying. I wish I had Rake here, but uh, unfortunately I forgot yeah. to buy it. There uh, is no sound on this level other than uh, the zombie sounds and the plant sounds. There's, there's no music. There's no music, so it's very spooky. Um, so yeah, you can explain the uh, the plants that are here and what we want. Yeah, so we've got star fruit. <clears throat> star fruit costs the same as split pea, and it's introduced right after split pea. Um, <clears throat> kind of to be like, a, oh, this is a better firepower thing. Um, this deals with diggers and it deals with the rest of the wave. Unfortunately, it's a little too expensive for us at that point. And Starfruit is not bad, not by any stretch of the imagination. 
Dark Fruit is actually used in three slot. Three slot a lot. Um, yeah. One of the all mini game levels, and also it's the most efficient uh, plant in in terms of dealing damage for how much it costs. Um, it shoots five projectiles out in five different directions. Um, and while by itself it is very weak, uh, strength in numbers is very apparent with this with Starfruit. Um, one row of them might not do super great, but if you have two rows of them, like they'll decimate the map. Starfruit is basically all that you need in this level in terms of firepower. The only reason we even consider Cactus is because you're not um, you're not well, guaranteed to get free. blowers, and it's free. Yeah. Yeah. If, if Cactus yeah, was it's free, free, so if Cactus yeah. was free, it would be a great plant. So. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's it's free firepower, and you're not guaranteed blovers, so Cactus prevents you from dying to balloon zombies. That's pretty much that's pretty much its only purpose. Wow, we got our first magnet shroom. At least we got one. Um, Wait, did I plant that in the you wrong You put row? that too far away. Oh boy. <laughs> I missed um, so the magnet shrooms are very very scarce in this level. Sometimes. Um, however. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes. They're, sometimes you get a billion of them. Critical for uh, for having a good level, which uh, this misplanted. Um... Okay, well at least he got that. There you go. That's 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 the use. Yeah, it's okay if you don't see anything, chat. <laughs> we are we are also guessing a, lo a lot. Um, it's typically just follow this layout, and then you know whenever whenever the lightning shows you where everything is, then you can react. Are there any donations? Do you know? Oh, there are not. Okay. I was just gonna say because this level is a lot of just uh, sitting around. Uh, you can probably no, yeah, you can definitely buy uh, roof cleaners immediately. Yeah. On five uh, two. Yeah, I think you buy roof cleaners before glues. That's the one thing I keep. Yeah, because so. Of, yeah. Right. Uh, so on the roof. Uh, which is the next level. We'll, uh, good we'll get to we'll get to roof in a bit. We'll, 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 we'll get there. It. We'll see it when we get there. But uh, you start with no lawnmowers is the main point, and you have to buy them. Um, so normally, normally it's pretty scary without them in a couple of the levels. Uh, I will be right back. Now we're gonna do roof. So the gimmick about roof, one is that uh, there's an incline, uh, which means that if we if we plant anything, if we plant a repeater in the uh, fourth column back, uh, it's not gonna be able to hit anything. It'll just shoot into the roof. 
uh, which is not very cool. Uh, we have to plant our repeaters in the fifth column or beyond. Uh, to kind of compensate for that, uh, the level gives us these this plant called the Cabbage Pult. Uh, the Cabbage Pult we can plant in any, any row and it'll do damage uh, to the zombie. So, uh, catapult plants are really what you're intended to use in this level. Uh, this is actually the only level where we'll use a catapult plant. Um, the other interesting thing about this level is that we took a uh, star fruit. Um, and so star fruit, it's a very space efficient way to deal damage to different lanes. Uh, it's sometimes useful, sometimes it's not as useful. Uh, but here we'll see cabbage pole. Uh, Cabbage Pult basically it fires at half the speed of a pea shooter, but deals twice the damage when it does fire, so the DPS is the same. Uh, the other thing this level introduces are uh, bungees. Uh, bungees will come down and take your take a plant or take a flower pot. And the big problem is we can't plant anything uh, without a flower pot. So and we don't we're not able to get any more flower pots. So we really want to be able to say to make sure we have as many flower pots as possible. So we took potato mine. One, because I didn't have rake. Um, uh, so it's like a faster way of killing the first zombie. Um, but also we're gonna be using potato mine as kind of a cheap way uh, for dealing with um, the, for dealing with the, uh, for, with protecting our flower pots if the need arises. Uh, another option is to take puff shrooms. So you might be wondering, wait, isn't puff shroom a nighttime plant? Didn't you say that nighttime plants are asleep? And they are, but it is a free way of uh, not having to to um, of saving your flower pots and also stalling. So. Um, That's one reason why you would take Puff Shroom, uh, even in a daytime level. And not a great star fruit situation. I'm almost gonna dig this up. The final wave. So here, the ambush zombies uh, will drop down from the sky. Uh, it's not very cool. Um, I want to. I'd rather save that repeater. Um, oh, did I take? Uh, I, I took. That's funny. I took a uh, wall died was a mistake. Okay, 5-2. We have the shop, so we'll uh, get break and uh, uh, roof cleaners. So usually... Oh, I missed 5-1. Yeah, 5-1 uh, was uh, interesting. Um, but 5-2, uh, so... Now uh, we're gonna abandon all catapult plants. Um, we're gonna basically play this level the same way that we play one nine and pool. We try to plant a bunch of sunflowers, one column of repeaters, and we try to chomper or use an instant on every wave in the second flag. Um, the reason why uh, this is a little more annoying is because you're not able to plant anything unless you um, have a flower pot, so you really need to be careful with managing your flower pot cooldowns, uh, particularly in the second flag. Um, so here. Um, and as you might notice, here is that in the last level we had five columns of flower pots for free, but now we only have four, and that level will decrease, and that amount will decrease one more time down to three, and that's where it will stay. Um, this is mainly to just introduce you to the idea of the fact that you're going to have to be placing flower pots everywhere. Um, in fact, the hardest uh, learning curve for this, um, for the, for roof in general, is the fact that you need to be very aware that you are always placing flower pots pretty much. 
Um, everything has an additional seven and a half second cooldown tied to it now. So if you are waiting on your flower pot because you didn't like pre-plant some ahead of time, then that's that's on you. You need to be very aware of it. And it's, uh, it's really hard to get in that habit, um, especially because, you know, you're not like, like maybe you're not thinking that far ahead whenever you first start running this game. Um, but the, the flower pot curve is, is definitely, uh, definitely one of the hardest things. You know what? I had no idea you could play flower pots on the flat part of the roof. That's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> but, um, uh, here you're going to see some creative placements of the flower pots and uses of the instance in order to help us get our 50% rules and whatnot. Uh, Pre-placements of potato mines, um, you know, uses of chompers, repeaters, etc. I am very uncomfortable um, with my repeater situation. Yeah. Um, can't believe this gamer is playing the game of all time, of all Tim. I mean, this is definitely one of my favorite games of all time. It, it even was before I started speedrunning it. This game is just very good. Really, it's it's really interesting seeing that uh, there's a couple people in the chat that said that they didn't even think of placing uh, flower pots on the flat part of the roof. They basically only used the cur the uh, slanted part, which is pretty funny. I mean, the game doesn't ever go, "Hey, by the way, you know, you need to." Uh, place flower plots on here if you wanna if you wanna plant them it's just like oh I can't plant them up here you know so I totally get that that actually makes a lot of sense that you wouldn't know because your first instinct might instead be oh I can't place flower pots here I can't place anything here not just I can't place something on a non flower pot space you know so I could I could see how the wrong lesson might be taught with that with that, uh, with 5-1. This is a very late cherry bomb, but hopefully it works out. Okay, um, uh, bungee zombies aren't necessarily bad. Uh, they might, you know, they steal your plant. However, what they don't do is actually dedicate any health towards the 50% rule. So whenever you see a bungee zombie, that has essentially taken those wave points out of the equation for uh, your 50% rule calculation. Uh, which is really, really great. What cherry bomb? And so, yeah, you can see here, um, the lack of flower pot cooldown is really hurting us. Yeah. Okay, uh, 5-3 is the same level, except we have, uh, ladder zombies, and we only have, uh, three columns of flower pots. Uh, so ladder zombies are basically like screen doors, except they move much faster. Uh, they are very annoying, especially in this level, we don't have great ways of dealing with them except with like chompers and stuff um also ladder zombies can place their ladder on a walnut tonut or pumpkin to be able to uh let other zombies climb over it yeah we'll and while this might sound pretty detrimental casually like oh no like that's my wall of defense i don't want those zombies getting past that um for us it's actually kind of a benefit we actually kind of want that to happen yeah, um, hopefully we see that. See. Hopefully we see that next level. Because if you put a pumpkin on a plant and the ladder zombie puts a ladder on the pumpkin, no zombies are going to be eating that pumpkin. Therefore, that plant will not be getting destroyed ever. Thus, a ladder zombie technically gives a plant with a pumpkin on it infinite health. And you so for us, that's really, really good for a plant that you're going to be seeing in the next level. 
Um, some of you might know what it is. Some of you might have an idea of what it is based on uh, how much money we have. And that might be a big enough hint to some of you to know already. Let's, let's keep it a surprise. <laughs> but for those of you that don't know, let's keep it a surprise. Uh, but yeah, the beginning of this level is going to be pretty much the same. Other than the fact of you're missing an entire row of flower pots, so it's like... Yeah, so we're going to have a little bit less sun plant sunflowers, yeah. just because it's not worth it to plant more. Uh, yeah. And while, while it is worth it to put down some extra flower pots there, just so that you can use the jalapeno kind of more freely... Um, you know, some, the, the extra 125 sun you would have to spend to put one in every spot is already kind of putting the sunflower at a big deficit. Um, there are much more in-depth um, guides on the speedrun.com page, uh, breaking down every level by Warmech Gaming himself, uh, more than likely. Uh, I have a guide up for all Steam achievements. There are guides for almost every single category. In fact, Balba, who is one of the top puzzle runners, I think the top puzzle runner again, uh, just recently. Um, made a guide for all puzzles very recently. Um, so it's it's very exciting when new guides are made because guides are very very accessible to runners uh, and new runners and it, it just helps grow the community when a new guide is made. Um, also, something to keep in mind about the ladder zombie is that catapult catapult plants can actually throw their projectiles over the ladder and also. Um, much like, you know, we did say it's like the screen door, they can throw it over the screen door as well. And catapults can also throw their projectiles at uh, snorkel zombies while they are under the water. Um, some people might not know that just because, you know, you would have to bring a catapult plant to a pool level, which means that you would have to play New Game Plus or a mini game for that uh, in the first place. I will say I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, so, so not many people know that one. Um, but, so, the game does not intend for ladder zombies to be that large of a difficulty spike, because, honestly, two cabbage pods takes care of a ladder zombie really, really quickly. Um, however, that's the, that's slower than just instantly killing them, so we, we don't care, um, about whether or not they can do it. Uh, there were some p proposed strategies later. <clears throat> is New Game Plus faster than any percent? No, no, because there is not a New Game Plus any percent. Uh, any percent can only be done on the first playthrough of Adventure Mode, while New Game Plus is actually a completely different experience. Um, yeah. So there is no New Game Plus any percent. There's only New Game Plus and any percent. Uh, New Game Plus adds a single flag to almost every level, which in and of itself makes the run longer. Um, and it actually ends up being like an hour and a half longer for some people, um, or just an hour. Um, so now, as you might see, we've changed our entire strategy based around the unlocking of a new plant called Coffee Bean. Um, what Coffee Bean is, is it costs 75 sun, and you can place it on a sleeping mushroom to wake it up during the day. Um, you've already seen how powerful mushrooms are. I've already seen how powerful mushrooms are. I think we all understand that mushrooms are nothing to joke about. And especially not the one that we just bought called Gloom Shroom. Gloom Shroom is amazing. Um, it's honestly kind of overpowered and should probably have not been released in the state that it was but you know it makes the game fun because the game is unbalanced for both sides and if both sides have little leeway then you know it's okay uh the gloom shroom 
does four hits of P damage in a three by three area around it with infinite pierce, by the way, um, at the same rate pretty much as uh, other attacking plants. So it can put out a lot of DPS. Uh, it's kind of insane how fast this thing can mow down hordes of zombies because of how much damage it does and how much pierce it has. Um, so everything is going to be designed around keeping our glooms safe or making the level faster. As you're going to see later, there are some sacrifices that have to be made with keeping our glooms safe. However, glooms kind of operate on a best defense is a good offense thing. Um, where actually you're probably going to see it in uh, a couple uh, in a couple levels from now uh, on 5-6 that uh, Gloom Shrooms just deal enough damage to the point where they don't really care about normal zombies ever at all. They literally kill them in less than a tile. Like, look at this. Insane damage. And then we also took Pumpkin because we're going to be planting our Glooms in the ninth column and it, you're going to get super fast 50% rules just because the Glooms are going to start firing immediately. And um, the only things on this level that we are kind of worried about are the football zombies and ladder zombies. However, there's also pogo zombies. Yeah, so pogo zombies are typically super detrimental. They can end your run entirely if you get bad enough luck. But with roof cleaners, that uh, that opportunity is pretty much gone entirely. Um, so it's yeah, unless not I'm really unless I'm incredibly unlucky or if I play very unsafe. Uh, yeah, which I I actually in my most recent attempt at a run got three pogo zombies in a row in the same row. Um, and it, I could not deal with it, and I, I died. Um, yeah. It just it just happens sometimes. Yeah, so if I didn't have a good money pace, I would have done a glitch uh, to get roof cleaners, because it's just way more marathon friendly. Um, yeah, so as you can see there, pogo zombies will die to two or more. Oh. Um, to two or more glooms, if it is jumping over them. You like the pre-placed sleeping doom shroom? Yes, and... So since mushrooms are asleep during the day, doom shrooms do not immediately explode. So we can actually place them off cooldown, uh, which you're seeing he can do here, so that we can use them whenever we want. Uh, so now we basically just have on-command screen wipes. Um, and while they are not true screen wipes, it's fine. Uh, it does the job that we need it to, and it's really good at it. Uh, pumpkin on your top one just because, you know. Yeah, I kind of want to plant another one. That is a really rare death. <laughs> yeah, I want another gloom, um, but I really don't have the pumpkin for that. Yeah, ideally we get a full, uh, a full column of five glooms in the rightmost column. Yeah, uh, generally, however, sometimes generally you only get four if you're going quickly. Um, yeah, the problem, the main problem is, of course, you know, Coneheads, again, as always. It's it's just how frequent Coneheads are and how tanky they are compared to a normal zombie. Like, that makes sense. I really need to, really need to start, okay, here we go, There's so we got football. football. Really need to start using my so, dooms. I have so many of them. <laughs> footballs can be seen on this level. Um, that's mainly what the prepped dooms for are here, and also squash uh, has a pretty big hitbox uh, detector, but only the footballs are detectable through the pumpkins. Um, so we actually is... have to use the squash on them. Oh, is this actually the ninth? Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I thought this was the eighth. Okay. Uh, but as you can see, even a football zombie will get just decimated by three wounds. Um, while it might not seem that way because it did take a while, it, that was still very fast for take, taking care of a, a football zombie. 
All right, this is the watering can. This unlocks the Zen Garden for us. Unfortunately, uh, we need to say goodbye to the Zen Garden because it's slow and you can also just exit to main menu immediately. Um, skipping the tutorial for it, which is fun. Okay, uh, and this is the uh, worst level in the run, like by far. Like We've, we've mentioned that there yeah, have no. been other bad levels, but this is like absolutely this undebatably the worst. Uh, unless you ask Warmech, who says it's the best, and I'm sorry, <laughs> Warmech, but you are wrong. Yeah. So the the thing about this level, so this is a conveyor level, but you only have four plants. Uh, you have the uh, chomper, you have the cherry, you have the flower pot, and you have the pumpkin. And the chomper and cherry are your only offensive plants for this. Um, I do not know why they thought this was a good idea, but um. <laughs> yeah. In fact, um. So for new game plus. This level receives an extra flag and also so new game bad. plus spawning rules, which are much harder. Um, so this this is one of the only mini game levels in new game plus that actually gets extremely way more difficult. Um, and having roof cleaners makes this so much. It feels so much yeah. better on uh, on in any percent. Um, you should try New Game Plus shop list where you don't have roof cleaners on New Game Plus. <laughs> I was so scared that I, that I managed to not die. And so I'm playing it kind of conservatively. Um, basically, if you kind of are a bit more passive, let your plants build up on the conveyor. Um, it's a little bit easier. Um, try to avoid using cherries, even though I think there the cherry was fine. Uh, but yeah, the thing yeah, about this... I play this level pretty aggressively. <laughs> I think the, the thing about this level is that it's... Um, the 50% rule does apply. Um, and we also need a 100% rule um, here. Uh, okay. So then um, every 10th uh, wave is going to be a bungee wave. And then we'll proceed on with the remaining waves. Uh, 11th through 20th. Hey! <laughs> yes, you can see this. They're gonna want to take those flower pots. If they were trying to take our chompers, we would want to protect them because it's really important. However, if we if we can. Yeah. So um, yeah. So five five. The, there's the mini game version of it, which is. Um, it's the new game plus scrapped. version, right? Because it's so bad. Yeah, it's the like... new game plus version. It was so bad that they actually scrapped it before launch and. The reason that we know that they scrapped it is because it's in the Limbo minigame, which means that they fully made it, it's a real minigame, and it's in the code. They just were like, no, this is not great. We, no one's gonna have fun with this. Uh, Landside, or Zide, uh, Lanks, Lankside. Um, the 50% rule is if 35 to 50% of the wave's health were to be dealt and damaged, the next wave spawns unless it's the ninth or 19th wave or etc the end of a uh right before a huge wave then all the zombies from that wave must die in order to spawn the huge wave um in order to end the level all the zombies on the screen have to be dead um so that that's basically the basis of pvz speed running like to see a lot of bucket heads here. The reason this level gets so bad is that it has normal spawning rules. Which is a big problem because of the fact that it can spawn a ton of normal zombies and not give you any cherry bombs to respond to them. Which we don't want. Wait. The... Please. It's pretty pretty terrible. Oh, it was uh, bucket head. Okay, I was trying to stall pretty the terrible. Zombie. If you get a lot of normal zombies on this level, your chompers yeah. get very easily overwhelmed by them, and then the normal zombies just mow through your defenses and kill you. Okay, well that ladder zombie is actually pretty great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not getting any cherry moment. cherries, which uh, you know, you know, maybe maybe we'll just use the roof cleaners for everything. Well, not this thing, but. Wait, okay. 
and this is why this is why we get roof cleaners. I think the cherry bomb actually did speed that up a tiny, tiny, <laughs> tiny bit. bit. So now we just got garlic, and now we can talk about how uh, that that glitch, that that thing that we thought was a glitch from earlier, um, whenever people are asking about glitches. So garlic has a neat interaction with it and the future code. Um, now what the future code does is it puts sunglasses on the zombies, which might not sound like a lot by itself. It's mainly cosmetic. However, when they bite on a garlic, it makes them immediately go from the lane they're in to the next one, as opposed to uh, having a little gross animation and then and then moving over. Um, this actually ends up saving a good deal of time uh, because they move into the range of the gloom shrooms faster and we're actually going to be trying to place a single gloom shroom to cover uh, the whole uh, of the of the screen with two garlics. That's that's our ideal scenario here. Uh, that way we can deal with the entire first flag for only about uh, 300 sun, ideally, and maybe just a tiny bit more than that. Yeah, so as you can see here, Deacon is going to be <clears throat> investing, instead of planting the squash, uh, he's going to be letting that zombie eat three sun... Uh, three sunflower spots with the flower pots because uh while it is cheaper right now no ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> no why was so it so close. slow yeah oh man that would have been so good yeah so sad <clears throat> and he re-rolled into such a fast speed too <laughs> is he even gonna die well he is but unfortunate the old zombie man yeah, and the amount of sunflowers in this level is very important. 15 is the amount you want to have, and you're spending that sun pretty much all the time. Yeah, so on 5-6, uh, we are introduced to the catapult zombie that you might have seen. Um, thank, thank you for the good luck for Deacon. Uh, D4, C4, and I wishes you good luck. Uh, no garlic in front of the gloom? No, we don't really need one. Um, gar gloom, gloom's just deal enough damage. It's pretty funny. Yep, and that's the catapult. Uh, the catapult zombie is supposed to move forward and then start throwing catapult shots at your uh, uh -oh. furthest back plants. <laughs> However, um, we typically just kill it before that even begins to happen. So, oh, I need yeah. To, I need to do but, but the catapult zombie squ squashes anything in the first, uh, in that ninth column there on the right. Um, no, you did exactly the thing I, I was about the, to explain. I did the no. thing. I've done that so many times before. <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. Yeah, so don't do what I just did, which is, uh... <laughs> yeah. If you if you place a squash, the squash will see the zombie. The hip, Its hitbox will no longer be on the flower pot. And if you place a garlic, the future code will move the hitbox of that zombie fast enough to where the squash actually moves. Uh, and that's what you just saw right there. Um, but the catapult zombie is worth five wave points, and this is six wave points. So that is not the point. That is not the Oops. <laughs> um, the catapult is worth five wave points, just for reference of, you know, if for those counting along at home. Um, and it's relatively easy to deal with. Just if you can think on your toes, you can definitely place a flower pot and a squash right underneath it uh, before it even has a chance to actually do anything. 
Okay, um, yeah, so 5-7 is kind of the same level, except three flags, so this would be a good time for any uh, donations. D4C4N donated $25, almost forgot about the run. A very late GL to Deacon. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's for a great cause. Thanks a lot for the uh, donation. Yeah. Also, we just got the umbrella leaf, which we will not be using in this in this run. That is one of the plants that we actually won't use at all during this run. It is uh, very there's one other one, and it's coming up. It is a great plant uh, for survivals. Yeah, just not for our purposes. Yeah. Um, yeah, but the the other thing about this level is that we also have uh, ladder zombies and um, Jack in the Box. Wait, do we have Jack in the Boxes? I forget. Uh, but we also have we also have we also have uh, bungees. Oh, I can let this guy go to the roof cleaner again. Um, but so this is a uh, three flag level and. There is another strategy here where you can take pumpkin instead of garlic and you can go with column nine pumpkins uh, and glooms. However, uh, catapults do exist in this level, so it's a little risky. A little risky. Uh, it has a very Langside big- side said, can you use it at least once for me, please? I mean, the only level left for you to do it in feasibly is 5-8, which I don't know how comfortable you would be doing 5-8 with pumpkin. Uh, who asked for pumpkin? Uh, Langside. Do I, do I like them enough? No. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to use pumpkin. Uh, five eight is a more controversial take on pumpkin, I will say. Um, but five six and five seven definitely have its better merits. Five nine has no merit for taking pumpkin. If you take pumpkin, you are probably. You're, you're, you're probably gonna die, honestly. Um, there's gargs, there's bucketheads, there's jack-in-the-box zombies. Um, and it's not it's not compromising an optimal strat, it's that there's gargs on the next level, so taking pumpkin is basically guaranteeing that your gloom is gonna get squashed and then you're probably gonna die because you lost the gloom. Or at least have it be very hard to recover from. Uh, gloom strats require a lot of focus to set up properly. Um, and sometimes it just doesn't pay off. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Through, it through no fault off. of your own. So. Yeah. Well, one time I had like my first gloom eaten like four times in a row, and I still somehow did not die during the level. We do have roof cleaners, so it's a little bit less risky uh, to die. Like, dying probably isn't going to happen. But I don't know. I, I was considering it, but then I just... I always take garlic. I did take pumpkin once, and now I have a gold that I can't beat. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh. Um, but yeah, pumpkin on this level has a lot of merit to it. Um, because being that it's three flags uh, and the fact that the the glooms in column nine kill the zombies a whole like four seconds faster yeah the, the it's a big difference it's really the third the third wave it really pays off or the third yeah. flag it really pays off the second flag doesn't pay off nearly as well because you don't really have all your glooms set up anyway yeah um, the other thing is that um, that can happen in this level is that these bungees can take your glooms. Uh, sometimes you can do something about it. Sometimes there's literally nothing you can do if you're uh, if you don't manage your cooldowns properly. <clears throat> okay, this yeah, is... bungee zombies are very very annoying. But if you have two fumes and then you have uh, like two glooms protecting your gloom, then it won't actually, it'll actually kill the uh, bungee most of the time. Yeah, there's just like 
some RNG elements based on global cycles. Um, and global cycle is a cycle that's running in the background constantly. Uh, that when you place, ooh, you almost did it again. I did. Uh, that when you place your um, uh, plants, it will start firing based off of the global cycle. Um, and then after that, it's just based on hit detection. But um, you can get caught in a really bad global cycle. In fact, with a repeater, you can place it down in the middle of a cycle to where it only fires a single P shot when you place it. Um, which is really weird. Uh, for glooms, what happens is they just stop, they just don't fire for like three seconds and it's very detrimental. Um, in fact, if, if you catch the bad, if you catch a bad global cycle for a gloom, it can be the difference between, um, losing that gloom or, um, not. I think this is gonna okay. die? Oh no, that, I think I got a bad global cycle. Okay. Like uh, I was gonna say, what you should do is you should try and do the thing where it accidentally takes the uh, coffee bean instead, um, but it still gets used. So here I dig up the uh, flower pot just in case uh, a uh, bungee is about to take my doom, so. All right, this is the marigold. This is purely an after adventure mode plant. Um, it is fully utility only. It makes you money when you plant it and it's a super long cooldown. It literally has no purpose to our speed run anymore because uh, we, we don't need money anymore. Uh, there's three more levels left. <laughs> Forgot the rake. Okay. Um, so this level uh, introduces the a very big difficulty spike, which is the Gargantuar. So the Gargantuar takes, I think, 150 pea shooter hits to kill, um, or two instants. I just let this go. So emphasis on two instants, um, because that is what we will be using. We will be using a prepped Doom Shroom and a squash in tandem. Um, are you going to be trying to do the? Doom Shroom, the next wave strat. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I will, I'll try to explain this ahead of time. So Deacon's going to be placing a squash, uh, uh, pre-planting a Doom, and then he's going to place a squash on the Garg. Uh, the Garg is going to deal more than 50% of its health. Uh, the squash is going to deal more than 50% of the Garg's health, and then the next wave will spawn. He's going to be trying to time the Doom to go off at the exact moment that the next wave spawns so that way we can get those zombies and the garg and the imp all at the same time with only a single doom um sometimes the timing on this is off and there's nothing you can really do about it um it's just uh, how it is sometimes um but in the scenario where it works it's very fast uh, in the scenario where it doesn't work, uh, nothing bad happens. So, yeah, it's, it's uh, pretty much... I think um, sometime, sometimes it works, but the imp gets by. That's the only kind yeah. of annoying part. Um, basically, the Garg has this uh, little zombie on its back called an imp. Um, and when it gets to half... When you deal half of the damage to it... Um, When you deal half of the damage to it, it throws the imp basically halfway across uh, across your map. And unlike PVZ2, the Garg will not be guaranteed to throw the imp. Um, I know that the Garg pretty much is guaranteed up until like right near the end. Um, however, in this, it throws the imp a fixed distance. So if that distance is no longer doable, it does not throw the imp. So once it hits a certain point on the lawn, it will no longer throw the imp when it goes below 50% health. All right, so we are going to be dealing with this wave here and then the guard wave will be next. Yeah, we're gonna use this fume shroom to protect our gloom from that cone head. And the guard can spawn in one of four rows. It actually spawned in a pretty decent row. Oh, that's really fast. Okay. 
Nice. That was pretty good. Pretty yeah, good. we got the we got a good row. Um, yeah, the guard can spawn in anywhere except yeah. for the top row in adventure and in, in anything that isn't survival endless. The guard can spawn in any row that is not the top row. And that is mainly so that the guard does not block your seed belt. Um, however, in survival endless, this matters much less. Yeah, that'd be a good squash. Uh, doom. 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 Right. There you go. I always forget to plant Doom. Um, I'm gonna say you probably might want to not Doom the 19th wave here because... It, it was a 6th wave Doom, so yeah, it's very risky. Um... I believe the next wave is going to be your 19th wave. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit, just ever so slightly too late. Or too... Um, now, as I mentioned before, <clears throat> everything that is... Uh, everything I can spawn in the level has to spawn at least once in the final wave here, so we're going to see that in motion. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh no, you lost frames. Yeah. You fool. Uh, this is the melon pult. This is pretty much, um... I don't want to call it a New Game Plus exclusive plant because it is available for 5.9, however... It's not that it, you should probably not take it on 5.9 unless you're doing a fully casual strap um, because it is very expensive. Oh, boy. It's a, it's 300 a, sun. It's a great plant, but yeah, it's very expensive. Yeah. No, not saying it's a bad plant at all. It's just very expensive for what we want to do. Yeah. And we could have the gloom shroom for the same price. Um, yeah. Deal way more damage. <laughs> and, um... So here, uh, basically, this is a the most like definitely the most difficult level of the run, uh, because here we have glooms, but we don't have garlic. So garlic has always been like a very easy way of kind of protecting our glooms, and now we don't have that. So we because and the reason why we don't have that is because we have to take magnet because they're bucket heads. Um, we're basically forced to take uh, magnet to deal with those metallic zombies. So, um, yeah, this level can be really fast, or this level can be like 30 seconds slower than that. Um, it's it's or just based get, on the amount of bucket heads that you get. Or if you get both gargs, then it's a minute yep. slower than that. Yeah, so on this level, there are three flags and the possibility of gargantuars. Um, the only waves that the gargantuars can spawn in are the 28th and the 29th wave. Um, outside of the final wave of which they have to spawn. And um, it is fully possible to get both of them, however unlikely it is. And if you get both of them, you will not have the resources to deal with both of them. That is a fact, because they're just too close together, you don't have the squash cooldown for it. Um, in fact, a, uh, a 28th wave Garg is a lot more more preferred to a 29th wave guard because then at least you'll have your squash back up for the final wave um but those spawns can completely throw your level off um i think it was peter i was watching yeah. who was... who was doing pretty good <laughs> he was on PB pace. Up until that level yeah up until was... this level and then he got the double guard spawn and lost the run <laughs> I always thought Peter got pretty lucky until that happened <laughs> with a lot of so things, but watch. yeah, it was... This level can be your angle or your devil. Amen. Um, and so here we actually don't have garlic because we had to take magnet, and we don't have pumpkin because we had to take magnet. So we are kind of um, really relying on that the best defense is a good offense motto of Bloom Shroom. Um, and Gloomshroom definitely has the ability to dish out damage for that. Like, these normal zombies, while they might get close, they're not going to be dealing damage to these Glooms. Yeah, I was, I was a little Gloom scared, way but... Too much damage. Yeah. Sometimes... I'd say his run petered out. 
<laughs> Terrible. And sometimes you can get a cone head in front of your gloom, which is uh, the worst thing that can happen. Yeah, thank God we did not see that. Um, if we did, you were gonna see Deacon juggle the cooldown of a flower pot and a sunflower perfectly by waiting until just before the flower pot dies and placing a sunflower on it. And then after the sunflower dies and the flower pot dies, the flower pot will be back up and you can you can cycle that over and over again. Um, and while it does cost sun, it's still less than replacing your gloom. So it's worth it. I have weak. Uh, Jack in the box zombies, very, very dangerous on this level. Yeah. I have um, way too much sun. Yeah. Uh, Jack in the box zombies can't. Well, you're not pre planting any dooms right now either. Yeah, I don't. Uh, usually I I used to, but then it causes problems with like bungees. Um, I think people usually pre actually pre planted in the third wave. I can pre plant one now. I'll pre plant one in this. Uh, Fifth column here. Nice bucket head. Yeah, because yeah. honestly, the best case scenario is <laughs> my joke trip the bullish detector and put me in timeout. I don't, I don't know what that. You does it? What's the Polish detector? Or is it the Polish detector? Two words spelled exactly the same. Um, but yeah, this level, uh, the first flag is definitely the hardest flag, so I'm very glad that we got through that without a lot of hiccups. However, the third flag definitely has the ability to still ruin the level. Uh, Jack in the Box Zombies, very, very dangerous. Yeah. One, because they're so fast that regardless of whether or not you remove their Jack in the Box, they are still going to get at least one or two bites off on your room. Wait a minute, you just, re you dug up that magnet and the same frame that it took the yeah. bucket off, so the bucket just disappeared midair. <laughs> but it still did it. Whatever works, man, yeah. Love that. And Whatever so works. we're we're mainly prepping these dooms. Uh wow, that's a lot of bucket heads. We're prepping these dooms just in case we get gargs. Um should be six, I think. Still nine, I believe. Yeah, that's nine. No, oh, that that was ten waypoints. There was a hidden normal zombie. Okay. I was trying to count the waypoints, and I counted nine. And then that cone head in the middle moved, and there was a normal zombie standing perfectly behind him. Uh, lucky for us, we did not see those guards. Perfect, perfect final wave there. Um, there is a chance that the bungee zombie that comes down at the end does not um, go off the screen in time to uh, actually die with the rest of the zombies and yeah. he might not be in range of the doom. So sometimes you just have to wait for him to go off screen and despawn. Okay, uh, and this, and this is, the... is the level with the best music in the game. <laughs> yeah, it's the final level. This is Dr. Zomboss, so he's uh, this... Uh, I guess this the head zombie. He's in a mech suit. Um, so the ish, the the deal with him is that you can only deal damage to Doctor Zomboss when he's leaning down. Uh, otherwise, he drops zombies, and this is basically just us passing time. Um, the key, the other key of this level is that you want to not have his health bet be between uh, twenty and fifty percent for two cycles in a row. So we call a cycle when like whenever he bends down, that's a cycle. Um, if that happens, uh, you guys will all point and laugh because it's going to be really funny. It's a potentially infinite cycle, so um, you can tell the, the estimate is... Um, we're at the last level and the estimate is uh, 345. It's mainly because uh, just so in case that happens here. Um, and what I'm going to do to try to make sure that doesn't happen is I'm going to... Uh, 
not have his health go above um, 20% right now. That's kind of the safest way to do that. Yeah, and then there's this thing called a busless three cycle. So when he, his health gets above 50%, he throws a van. For some reason, we call it busless, even though it's not actually a bus. Um, <laughs> but uh, yes, that's, it is. Don't 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 you deny the community? But technically, that's well, that's the fastest three cycle you get. It actually is possible to get a two cycle. Uh, it it's a lot. It, it's um. I don't. I've I've never gotten close. I've gone for it before, but it like I never get close to it. Yeah, I've um, I've gotten pretty close a couple times. Um, oh yeah, that's the kernel pull. So the kernel pull uh, launches either a kernel or butter, and the butter does a normal pea shooter damage shot, and the kernel pull does I believe half of that. Um, so he does pretty low damage. He's mainly for utility. Um, and I honestly completely forgot about him um, whenever we were explaining plants earlier. Yeah, no. Colonel Pulse. Colonel Pulse, great, uh, because it of the upgrade plant on top of it. Uh, but it by itself, um, it's actually you 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 don't think it's great until you do the uh, I Zombie levels. I'm gonna do this, you know. I have the ice shrooms. Yeah, so the pattern here is really going to be um, when he comes down, Jalapeno Ice Shroom, because freezing him uh, will actually keep him frozen for a little bit, and um, it will stop his cycle uh, for the time being. And we want that. We want to do that so that we can... Ooh, unfortunate. Come on, give us Jalapeno. Ooh, it, sounds, it looks like your roof cleaner is going to get squashed. Yeah, that's okay. Unfortunate. Oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot um, that So Zomboss, that was the boss. He, he does that. He does that. Um, it squashes a 2x3 or 3x2, I don't know. Probably, yeah, 3x2 area of um, plants. And it's it's our, it's slightly random, but um, we place our melon pulse in the back for the reason of... Uh, it, it's less likely to get hit if you have more flower pots as he's more than more than likely going to trigger it um, in a space that's more densely populated. Um, however, that that row that uh, just got the lawnmower triggered will not spawn any zombies for the rest of the level. Um, and that doesn't mean that there will never be zombies there again. What that means is that in the code, the game says uh, that no zombies will spawn there for 100 waves. Uh, fully possible for that to happen. However, it's not going to happen in this run. Uh, no way. And time is going to be on when we grab this silver sunflower trophy. Yeah, so three, two, one, time. Time. Yay! Yeah. And then uh, we have this awesome end credits song, so um, we'll, uh, we'll let this play uh, while we uh, give our shout outs. Sunflower. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, so uh, thanks to everyone who uh, watched this. Um, thanks to ESA for hosting this. Thanks to everyone who donated to this awesome cause uh, to research Alzheimer's. Um, Thanks, and so I uh, just wanted to give a shout out to the uh, Plants vs. Zombies speedrunning community. Um, as I mentioned before, you can just get this game on your phone and start speedrunning immediately or playing casually immediately. Uh, we have a lot of supportive people, a lot of uh, OGs um, who <laughs> are very helpful, very friendly, who will uh, help you um, get started. Um, yeah, and just a huge shout out to all the people. I'm, I'm a fairly uh, new runner to this. There's like years of research, of testing that I that like built up to me doing this. Uh, so shout outs to them. Um, yeah, and Easy Pig, if you have any other shout outs. 
I have a screen door shield. Um, no. <laughs> uh, it's funny because Deacon actually brought this event up to me with the idea of me being the one running at the event. Um, and I was like, I don't have money to do that. I'm a college student. Um, so I, I was like, I'll just, I'll just commentate from afar. I don't, I don't have the, the means of doing that, but I am very glad that I could be here for this event. Um, I, I was, uh, I was part of the couple of people that started bringing more marathons to the community. Um, Deacon's one of them, Al Alxame is one of them. Um, <clears throat> just, uh, like helping the community get their name out there a little more and, um, I'm really, really happy that we had the chance to perform the speed run for all of you here because uh, it seems like like a lot of people don't know that PBZ can be speed ran and whenever they hear it can, they're like, I want to see it because PBZ is great and I want to watch it. And um, it just makes me really happy to see, you know, a thousand people get together to watch PBZ be speed run for three and a half hours. Uh, PBZ is a very technically demanding game. Um, it's, it's, I love it because I love solving puzzles and it, it just feels like one big puzzle to solve. So if that's, if that's for you, if you like solving puzzles and speedrun PBZ, this is one three and a half hour long puzzle to solve. Uh, that's, that's how I'll frame the run. Yeah. It's a great way of describing it. Yeah. And yeah. And thanks to ESA for uh, letting us showcase this.